uh, yeah, I'm recording. come back when you're done eating that. Thanks. You're muted. I can't hear you because I turned your mic off. So eat your banana. That's what it sounded like. It's He's like saying, saying something, but I'm not listening. Are you done with eat, your banana? Eat your banana. Finish your banana quick in one bite. Oh my God. He's just deep throated a banana. He's just like, he, I've never seen a banana go down a man's throat. He did like that he before. Did, he's not even chewing. He just swallowed it. Just like a duck. Just like <laughs> impressed. Kind of. I'm hard. That's kind of like being mean. impressed. It's that's like the ultimate form of being impressed. Is yeah. Having a, having a little bony. They say, uh, impress impersonation is the ultimate form of flattery, but. I think it's being I say, hard. I say, I say premature ejaculation. Oh, yeah. That's the ult- highest compliment soft, you could pay. Soft premature ejaculation. That's what that scene in American... Ooh, damn. <laughs> 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 completely? Just completely you ever soft. Done that? Like cold, Holy like shit. it's cold weather outside, too. <laughs> and it comes out cold, too. It like, doesn't even know what's going on yet. But it's just <laughs> no, rocking it, it out. out like liquid hot magma. You know those steam coming off of it? Yeah, you know those videos when people it's like on social media when it's really cold out and people take like steaming hot water and throw it and then it like mists. That's what happens with your cum. Oh gross. This is what we're talking about what happened to you. I know, but it sounded (laughs) stranger. (laughs) And then you're like then you just breathe it (laughs) and you're in this like mist cloud of your own cum and then you I like a big like breath. The word cum all the time. And then it's like osmosis Jones in your lungs, but it's all your little sperm. And then that's the beginning of the movie. Yeah. It zooms in into your cells. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like that's a Danny Elfman's now. score plays. Remember that movie Fantastic Voyage that osmosis Jones is based on from the 60s? Did you ever watch that in science class? Fantastic Voyage? And that's like basically like the human body ride at Epcot, right? Yeah. It's like uh, the original version of that where you, they shrink the people down and they go inside their body. You think in a magic school bus? That's also based yeah. on Fantastic Voyage. Nah, that was first. There's this one part where Raquel nice. Welch Get him. is getting, um, I think it's like bacteria snot crust just like attaching to her body and like flaking on her and like building up like hard boogers. That sounds cool. And I was just imagining that happening and like she's in your lungs getting like cum crystals. Just, like, <laughs> yeah. No. Attacking her like oh. ninja stars. I yeah. was, I'm thinking they're floating around beautifully and like snowflakes and they're touching them and oh, grabbing yeah. them and they're like, like melting. Catching them on their <laughs> catching them on- <laughs> Each one is unique. Each <laughs> it's well, also so beautiful. Who knew the human body was so beautiful? Yeah. <laughs> they might be like snakes. You know, oh, if you're so. small oh. enough. They're actual sperm yeah. cells. Oh, like little snakes. It depends, it depends how yeah. well it depends how small you are. They could be anacondas if you go small enough. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Which would be an interesting sequel to Anaconda. Or yeah. isn't there like four of them? John Void just drinks a bunch of sperm. Winks at yeah. the camera and dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Ice Cube is like, yo, what the fuck? Bro, uh, I was thinking Ice Cube would just hit him with a damn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I never seen a guy drink that much cum before in one in one thing. And that's Anaconda wow. too. And then Ice Cube busts in his pants. The <laughs> ultimate compliment. And that's what John Boy wanted the whole movie. So it's like that's his arc complete. That's completion of his arc. Oh. I mean, they got. They got sperm out here this big? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hell no. They're just in a jungle boat going through a bloodstream? It's just Ice Cube and John Voight. Nobody else wanted to come back for this one. I can't picture John Voight. Jennifer Lopez, all her scenes are filmed in one day, and she just like calls in and gives some advice, and then you don't see her anymore. Yeah, then the cum drinking starts. They They don't tell her about the cum drinking scenes. That, that part of the story ice cube would really do any sequel like 
Remember, like, after Chris Tucker left? Oh, yeah, Friday after next. And it just, who was it? Uh, uh, Mike Epps. Yeah. And that was pretty and good. Why, why did Chris Tucker leave? He was too busy fucking kids on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Wait, is that true? Just kidding. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. He didn't wait. That. He didn't wait till he got to the island. He couldn't wait. He was no, doing it on the plane. I think Chris Tucker's an innocent. Like, I think he's caught in the crossfire a little. bit. There was bit. a guy named Chris Tucker on the plane log. Just no, that was name. Chris Tucker, but he was like going to an Africa thing, like an like an Africa benefit thing. All right, I'm sure you've verified this. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know more about pedophiles than I do. I'll give you that. Yeah, it takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. no, no. He was going to an Africa thing. I thought it was like a bet, like a, you know, he was like, hey, celebrities in Africa. Celebrities you know, kids, of Africa. Kids in Africa. Just to see what happens. Put celebrities in Africa. Um, that's true. Yeah, maybe they were going there for, for African kids. That's, that's uh, inclusive. <sighs> It's like I don't. Speaking of no, I just it reminded. Speaking of kids, I was just that movie we watched sucked. No. Yes. I love, I love when you're. Called? I love when you're done with the. Whenever you're done with this preamble thing, you're just like. So speaking of. Whatever, yeah, I'm just trying to get to the movie of. because I I watched it this morning and then I logged onto the Zoom an hour ago, just not paying attention to time, thinking we were starting an hour ago. I got bad news. I was wrong. Chris Tucker is hanging out with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. And Bill Clinton. He's got his uh, hands on their both of their necks, like that picture of Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> He's blooming him. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry. Well, I didn't mean to uh, steal your thunder. No, it's all right. I'm just... I like to do a little real-time fact-checking. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, you know? I thought it was one of those things where a guy had the same name. Yeah, well, that was, like, what people said online because there was confusion. See, that's what I... And I believed it. Can't believe everything you read online, guys. My sister-in-law is... I do it anyways. Um, ...is a Q guy, and he uh, posted a thing about, like, you know, there's, like, a, a obviously not real version of Epstein's flight log that's, like... Tom Hanks, Oprah, like it's like made on in MS. Mr. Paint. Rogers, yeah, yeah. It's just like every single celebrity that they could, like, somebody could think of in like the span of two minutes when they were typing out a page, and they're like, and but that got, gets like spread too. Tom Hanks, I, I believe he's got he's probably got the darkest secret, would be my yeah. guess. Because he's I don't know what it is. Clean cut motherfucker. Some there's something, and yeah, I mean it's got to be something. And I know it's not his son, Chet, because we all already know about Chet. That's no secret. That's no secret. Yeah. Isn't it, don't they say he, like, takes pictures of, he, like, talks people into killing themselves, or he, like, pushes them off bridges or has people murdered? Tom Hanks? Ha yeah, have you seen that? No. Like, his Instagram, he he takes a bunch of weird photos. He he takes a bunch of weird photos of, like, single shoes. You know what I'm, like, he, it's, like... That's a single shoe shit. on the side on the side of the highway and but it's tom hanks doing it so you're like oh he's being charming but then somebody linked one of the shoes to a person who supposedly jumped off this bridge and killed themselves but tom hanks like posted the picture before the body was found or like that's pretty i don't chilling. know the whole like youtube conspiracy thing but William, what's your Why take? would he kill people and post it on Instagram? Well, he was taught. This guy was like somehow connected to Tom Hanks. No, he's not killing people. He's probably you, when you're that level of celebrity, you probably low key pay somebody to do it, or just have one. And of then your he bodyguards. posted the photo himself on Instagram. That's well, how yeah. he. I mean, why do serial link. killer? Why do serial killers keep heads in their fr freezer? You know, there's no, there's not logic behind yeah. crazy power people. Well, I hate those crazy power people. I hate them crazy power people. <laughs> They're the worst. Um, I didn't. I didn't think the movie was bad. It was like, awful. It was. I mean, there's definitely some bad, bad things about it, but um, let's uh, uh do a little intro on the movie though. Okay. Explain All right. the context. Take okay. Take us away. So the movie we watched is Class of 1999, which is actually a sequel to the movie Class of 1984. 
Yeah, why didn't we watch that? Yeah, what? I didn't know that. Why didn't we well, watch that one? You can <laughs> watch good. either of them in either order because it doesn't, they're not really related to each other. Okay. It's just like in that class of 1984 is a movie about a teacher who goes to a transfer to a new high school and there's a gang of punk rockers who are fucking shit up. And Roddy McDowell's in it, Michael J. Fox, and it's like maybe his first role. And in that movie, the teacher ends up having to kill all the students. That makes That's more cool. sense. It's way movie. better. It's way better than Class of 1999, but I thought Class of 1999 <laughs> would be good to watch because. Or to make fun of the show. It just seemed like a funnier movie and it's like a funnier time capsule. Yeah. And it's, uh, I still enjoy it. It's a movie I watched a lot as a kid. We would rent it and we were already big Class of 1984 fans. And Class of 1999 wasn't as good, but we still liked it because the cast is really good. That's yeah, there's probably there's like the, fun elements to it for sure. And the cast that's like the decent. Yeah, there's great actors, dude. Malcolm McDowell, Stacey Keach, and like an insane get up. Uh Pam Greer is oh, in it. Pam Greer's mommy. Who is that? Pam Greer S mommy. She's Pam the black Bliss. female teacher. Oh. From Jackie Brown, she's in it. <clears throat> oh, I didn't put those two together. You yeah. didn't recognize Pam Greer immediately? No, I, I also was like going in and out. I was making my bed. I was doing laundry when I was watching. I was out. The premise of the movie immediately took me out of it because it made zero sense. The so tell the, the movie's tell the, the best premise, thing about it. Tell the premise, tell the premise the pre- and I'll tell you why it take, is bullshit. <laughs> right. I know. Well, there is one giant plot hole in the movie. So it's the future, 1999, and the movie was shot in 1988. And schools are so such as schools are so dangerous cities are so dangerous and overrun with gangs that they have free fire zones in the middle of major American cities. And there's a high school in the middle of the free fire zone in Seattle. And the high school is so out of control that there's a private company that develops military robots, turns them into teachers and they're going to integrate them into the school but they don't tell anyone they're doing this. They never tell anyone like, Hey, we're going to, it's an experiment, right? Yeah. Like the first time they're doing it. And uh, Malcolm McDowell plays the principal of the school and Stacy Keach plays the like robot designer who also owns the company and he's in charge of uh, overseeing the robots. And um, there's like three main influences on the movie Westworld. Hmm. And you can see that in how they like oversee the robots and how the robots get out of control. Right. The scientist scenes. And yes, exactly. And then Robocop is like a big influence. And then because it's like a private company doing this inside a public sector, it's like a Robocop mega mega tech ripoff. I feel like. And then the Terminator, because all the teachers basically have Terminator style bodies. Like they look human on the outside, but then like they can lift their face up and have like a Furby robot inside their head. (laughs) (laughs) Cutting edge technology, Furbies. But then also another influence in the movie that I didn't really pick up on, but the director said in the commentary, and it makes sense when you like think about it, a huge influence on the movie is Clockwork Orange. And I was the reason thinking why that the, too. Yeah, I the gangs that look I thought I noticed that. so um, androgynous. Like the lead character in the movie, Bradley Gregg, who's in uh, Stand By Me, he plays Eyeball. He is wearing a woman's jacket. Right. Oh, nice. I mean, he's wearing a cropped yeah, denim yeah. jacket. Like a ladies that's, jacket. I mean, what? but he looks cool. Like, but like, I don't, people. I, don't, I mean, are, people are wearing women's clothing in the movie. A like, they're wearing a jacket. Ryan's scarves. wearing a ladies' jacket right now. I wear ladies' clothes all the time. I wear women's clothes all the time. To be honest, hand me down thrifts from my cousins and stuff. Um, that's not. I mean, that's cool. That's You're like man. the guy yeah. in Clocker Gorge. You're like Jaden Smith. This is a woman's Nebraska sweater I'm wearing right now. That's cool. That's great, man. <laughs> That's really cool. So yeah, this is another movie I watched a lot as a kid. And I wanted to watch I wanted to show Adam and Ryan because they'd never seen it, probably never heard of it. Um, which I think is a good mix of uh for the pod. Now I heard Ryan. Of, right. <clears throat> apparently doesn't like it. Adam seemed to enjoy it. I, I liked it, but I didn't um i saw your score after i watched it luckily and uh we i'm not in i'm not within half a point (laughs) we'll see 
Let's just leave it at that. Maybe you, you can, can give it me. two and a half stars. Uh, my, one star. Whole, I don't give a shit. The whole the whole premise <laughs> is is like these kids are cool and they're cool and in gangs and they're shooting everything up and they're like in control of sections of states, like a little area. They the are a free, the free violent fire. gang. They have machine yeah. guns. They all have so have then everyone has a machine you gun. You want to know? You want to know what the coolest thing though is? They not go to high school going, every day. Not going to <laughs> school. <laughs> yeah. No, buddy. They got to go to high school. We got to go to high school, man. <laughs> There's right, no when that, right when that happened it was just like no i'm out That's they're like literally shoot, immediately in the first five minutes they're shooting at each other in the streets get like 30 people at once yeah well here's and, the thing the lead like, character let's go bully this kid in school now <laughs> yeah the lead you character he's getting him. out of high he's getting out of prison yeah. he's on parole he has to go to high school right He'll get and he's trouble. part of the he's part of the experiment too. Yeah, that's the, no, that no, is, no, no. He's not part of the experiment. Yeah, well, the, at the beginning they, they said they them? they they released a bunch of high school kids out of prison to interact with these teachers. So they were oh, trying to they were. I think he's right. Yeah. Yeah, right at the beginning. So like they that's why he got released is because he wasn't the only one. They just he was the one we were following. But it is funny. Yeah, like the one thing that, like kids like kids that are really bad do is they stop going to school immediately yeah that's like, like how it starts um it made yeah. no sense and the rest of it i was like all right it was cool at the end like the 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 what is it cosmetics what is the word uh, costumes aesthetics? when they were fighting and stuff yeah oh yeah yeah like the rubber shit you're saying when they went like full robot yeah yeah um Another thing that's funny, it's it's funny that like back in the 80s and 90s that um, like the scariest thing to people that they would make movies about was uh, high school kids being like out they're, of control. They're scary, dude. I turn my or music like down punk, when I drive by high school kids. Like when gangs used to be like punk gangs before, like, I guess, like black people, they like let stories be about like things that involve black people. Like get, gangs were always just like punk, like street punks. Stuff like that. Well, but probably I think it's like they, they would like they would still make like white movies and black movies, and then they would just like if they're gonna make a a white marketed movie to uh, a white audience, oh, to have it be like, punks. we're gonna make them punks, right? Yeah, we're gonna yeah. make them white because the gang. There's like I mean, also a lot of that was influenced by hip hop, and if this movie came out in eighty four, no, it came out in ninety, I think ninety. So that's yeah. like still the beginning of it we're still in like run dmc phase <laughs> yeah no, but no, no, no. they had black high school like kid movies where they're out of control that they that it's yeah. a separate like genre it, well you have like there are more you have like lean on me you would have like um oh like stand in the principal is like uh Latino. that's like a mexican yeah yeah you know one that's like um uh, crack house that's another one that's oh i have that i haven't uh, seen that well now that you say that you know what's interesting is whenever it's like a futuristic or cyber like technology thing there the punks are always like uh spiked up hair like the punks from um frank miller's batman that he wrote what do you what they're, they're just always leather jacket like punk rock, like um, um the clash like, wearing clash t-shirts like, and um, like all futuristic okay, uh, gangsters the, are like punks what's the band that all those people love um uh, uh <laughs> left like like leftover crack that's not the band this is well, <laughs> well like <laughs> another one to content. look at is the, know, like the warriors obviously not good um, <laughs> did you ever see the warriors they're that's like, what i was picturing when you do yeah, the warriors. Warriors. i really like the clock but they, Orange. That, uh the warriors that's, a, that's an like, interesting costume themed it's like, we're the to, baseball guys <laughs> right they were themed for sure um in a fun, very fun way they had a lot of fun with it um but clockwork orange is that's it's cool to think about that movie as like the proto type of <clears throat> these punk yeah or like yeah the these massive like delinquent, influence on punk delinquent movies and punk yeah too that's cool like but also delinquent movies go back about, to the 50s so people don't talk about clockwork orange being influential in, in that way i think well, I guess you, it's like a dystopia. Who do you talk to? I thought it was like known as uh, one of the most Ryan influential. 
Yeah. Like, Mostly just Ryan and Whitney. <laughs> it's so the influential one. that it's like not even worth talking about. Yeah. It's just part of the culture. I guess. I wasn't punk, a big fan of punk, that movie. You never hear, in punk, you never hear about Clockwork Orange. Not now. But back then you did. Now the everybody's 70s. talking about the Joker, dude. Now everybody's yeah. dressing up like clowns, bruh. That's true, yeah. Joker is the new... He's the <laughs> Joker is the new cool the, punk. Punk rock. Uh, yeah, he's the new punk, for sure. Dude, the, so I honestly... Is... I'm kind of getting into this. I'm kind of getting excited for Zack Snyder's Justice, Justice League. Oh, it's going to be so much better. But it's also... That's not a high bar to reach. It's like four fucking hours long. I, I don't want to really want to watch oh, it. Oh, really? Like, yeah. Have you I'll seen Justice League? Sittings. Yeah. I liked I it. I liked Dude, Justice Ryan, League. you and me and Sherpa went and saw yeah. Justice League together. We got we ate like a fun. Because then we we played Injustice thing. before and oh yeah, <laughs> that was great. Anyway, and um, then we and that we played Injustice and then we got we went and felt Injustice <laughs> <laughs> while watching the movie. You're we like, oh, this is what it feels like. Oh, <laughs> sitting there in a the movie theater. <laughs> um. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, I'm not really sure of what he can really salvage out of that. It seems pretty They're he's shooting more though. He's been shooting extra. Oh scenes. yeah, they they added a few scenes. <laughs> Which is kind of What? A, the only reason why I think that's Are you serious? That makes me I intrigued. never I never knew that, Adam. Thank you for informing me. <laughs> oh, okay. porno, I thought you were like scene. acting like that was a big deal. All right. Um, but Batman I, and Superman kiss. It's I have rare. Spoils. <laughs> it's yeah, that's what he shoots. It's all that kind of stuff. Um it's rare where a movie can do this, this happened with of, Superman 2 with the Donner cut. Okay, let's he move shot on. The Dahmer, the Dahmer cut? Also, it's a different director. Jeffrey da- there are Jeffrey two directors, Dahmer. a Superman 2, Richard Donner, and Richard Lester. I Everybody say, knows this. You guys don't know anything. No, You're but, failing the pod oh, and your audience. Oh, oh, okay? oh I see. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, but because it's like different because he's like... Ryan's he's a joker. The director back. Adam is <laughs> Steppenwolf or whoever. Want to know how I got these scars? <laughs> Can we talk about how bad me. Cyborg is as a character? I mean, that guy is kind of flat. It's just what ludicrous. Are you talking about? It's kind of a flat character, I guess, but like it's kind of a cool. It's just. Are, it's you, ta- weird, are you specifically it's talking about that movie? For that movie, I think. Specifically to the movie Justice League. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brutal looking character. Just really? Visual just effects. You wanted, well, you just want a little cyber dong. Yeah, that's why you. That's why you're. The robots. <laughs> I prefer the actors. I Where's like the actors cyber playing dog? robots in um, my class of '99. I like that. <laughs> like class, it's just like there's very good robot performances in class of '99. I would say. The teacher with the white hair. He's my favorite <laughs> robot. The English guy. They're not acting like robots at all, though. What are you talking about? Pam, no, they like, were. She she's was acting just like acting Pam like a Pretty cool teacher. And he's yeah. acting like a. The only she, guy who's. I mean, toward, robot towards the, the end, she guy. got more robotic. What about yeah, the scene that, where they're driving in the car together? That Pam well, yeah, performance. That's towards the end. Sometimes she does that's a robot, the sometimes the she doesn't. But oh, it's Jesus, like it should have been the end. It's like uh, Kevin Costner's performance in Robin Hood: Prince of Thieves, where he like sometimes has a British accent and sometimes doesn't. That's what Pam Grier is doing with the robot. Well, throughout the course of the movie, they became less human and became more militarized, and they yeah. lost more of their teaching programming. Oh, that makes sense. It's a very controlled performance. Very carefully. <laughs> designed and written out they should have been more careful with the premise whoever wrote it then because it was a pretty good cast and i liked how everybody uh, the 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 megatech guy who was that actor stacy keach who came up with his own look oh i was gonna say that's what i was about to talk about that's amazing the rat tail that it was a perfect diamond mullet or like triangle mullet the first shot of the movie and then he wore he wore those white contacts yeah yes that's just like great actor that's just oh, that ha- having cool. your eyes so full of cum that your pupils are white. What I liked about his costume is that it made him look mysterious right? and possibly okay. evil. You know? Subtle choice. Yeah, it's very subtle. Subtly untrustworthy. That man yeah, with he's white the, eyes. He's the leader of a, the, a multi-billion yeah. dollar militarizing droid company. There's no way this guy's evil. I thought that um, Stacey Keach was a really good uh, Who's that? cast. That's the guy who plays him. He's he's a really good call it. Well, I I don't want to jump on your the point that you made in your letterbox review, which I thought was really good, William. Um, you're great. Teachers are the heroes. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, the the Movies kids should are be the about the teachers. Yeah, and and but I think like casting Stacy Keach as the leader of 
of the robots does a lot because like he's Stacy Keach cannot he's like always shady look seeming and like hey Adam can you turn your camera off please I don't want to watch you rubbing your feet picking your toes <laughs> he's, he's just rubbing his feet I'm just thinking <laughs> Just saying whatever now comes now to my head. He's just it, pulling he's out his, his hand and up to his face, slow now stroking got, himself. Got athlete's foot put <laughs> on his lips. Athlete's foot. I'm that guy athlete's on foot. the on um from the New Yorker or whatever. <laughs> just Jeffrey Jack, Tubin. Jack, yes, thank you, Jeffrey. Jeffrey and his Tubin. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying to any attention to what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. I was just trying to say that Stacey Keach is a. Uh, is he's Great such a actor. good casting yeah he, he does a really good job in this movie and he does a lot of recontextualizing the robots as the bad guys i think because he is such a good v- villain like you where he's seen like obviously in the look is obviously an untrustworthy look just thinking about in the language that like visual language and stuff that this kind of stuff is trying to communicate like the movie if if you're saying william that the gangs are the bad actually the bad guys which is true because there's like good kids in the school that aren't trying to cause trouble and shit um yeah there's and, three three thousand some uh, look, i'm joking around <laughs> and teachers no, aren't no, heroes they're, they're murdering point. students but from the movie standpoint it has to be we have to still be on their side because that's like it's like the kid who gets out of jail he's at the a, beginning before he tries the teachers to be good murdering before people him. like he's trying to like go be a straight and narrow kid and shit and then like Correct. and then at after his brother gets uh killed or beat up or whatever oh, murdered that, by the robots murdered by the that, robots that <laughs> scene was that in scene cold was blood awesome they just toss him they just yeah, tossed cool. him like josh miller feet. another great casting the kid from near dark and river's edge josh miller Let's that talk about him in a, in a little bit. Um, but uh, so what I was going to say is like, so then when that happens, the main kid becomes a bad kid again and like violent and shit. And obviously for a reason, but like, yeah, because he's reason. our, he's our point. So the, he, he's our point of view for, as the audience into the movie through this world and shit. So like are you rambling on. About? Yeah, what are you <laughs> talking about? Boring and incomprehensible. What are you talking not, about? Because it's the not, teachers are the I'm bad guys. a shit this. who's good and bad. That movie is just about, it's just about what's compelling and interesting. Um, no, I'm talking about like the casting of Stacey Keach. Like you're just like uh, morally like, weighing the shit where these like utterly ridiculous cartoonish. These, ter- these Terminator to robots com- start com- murdering drug addicts. I'm trying addicts, to get to a complex thought. Teenage. The well, complex you don't have one. Well, as a, yeah, as a choice. No, a it, and the choice time, of. So. <laughs> I don't know if we got time. I'm so close to getting it, like 95%. Um, but like the casting of Stacey Keach, like I was saying, like, so like. He's obviously the bad guy. He looks so evil yeah, that it's. And it's that's. He's the only yeah. adult that has contacts. Even the robots yeah. don't have contacts or mullets. Yeah. That, but that's the movie helping facilitate us think of the robots as the bad guys instead of the law enforcement response how dumb are you you need like a costume to tell you if a character is good or bad in a movie that's, that, well that's how that's how that's all you do need i think is are you joke like you communicate okay so visuals, here's the here's, visuals of the character first of all what you're talking about is like romanticism of like like oh the knight in shining armor he's the good guy and then the ugly no that's visual toad language is of the bad guy that's a visual language of storytelling yeah, it's because also it's based on the pe- people a lie common... it's a lie Conception. of storytelling whereas like a movie like Schindler's List is really sophisticated because they take Ray Fiennes as like really handsome actor and they make sure, him but that's a subversion the Nazi of something that is a natural yeah that's natural, better like, storytelling natural I thought I thought that was good storytelling because they well, only show it, red yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this no, movie's art. This movie's an artsy movie because it's there's red. It's you say is wearing a red sweater. It's so. red. You just love pink. any movies that show red. Is it pink? I've never. No, seen it's red. Gender's it's fucking. List. It's red. Ryan's right. I love this because isn't it? Isn't it like a rose? Isn't it like the main? <laughs> no, it's a girl's. Movie, like it's a, a girl's ro- jacket. A girl's red dress or something. They also show the candles. Look, I was paying. They also show her body in like a conveyor belt going. Her corpse going into a mass burning pile of of dead bodies damn that's such a good movie move that that movie does that like it's I've a very rare it, yeah. movie move would it still hold up 
<laughs> William always thinks I have to, everything I say is so retarded. God, though. man, Schindler's List, oh, such a good, good movie. movie. No, the the movie red sweater film. move is a is like it's artsy, dude. What That's other you know. well, what other movie does that? That makes exactly. that Tokyo Drifter. Oh, really? It's Tokyo Drift. Yes. It's black and white completely, and then there's one color that like is a as a, a like as a way of associating something. <clears throat> First of all, Schindler's List has multiple color scenes. The candles are in color, and Tokyo Drifter does the same thing. There's like sometimes moments are in color. Little objects in the scene. But this it's is Schindler's not List. Uncommon. This is Schindler's List. They should have done that with class in 99. The point. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the point. Is, stop trying to segue, dude. Um, the, <laughs> the point is. Adam's uh, got to make his point because then he's going to win the argument. And then I'm going to go, oh, Adam, you're so right. Wow. What a great point. Oh man, Schindler's, be, Schindler's List. So awesome. shit. They did make good moves awesome. in Schindler's List. No, like the point of being like he sees the only thing he remembers about this really intense thing that he kind of compartmentalized and was. What like, movie are we talking about? Not connected to Schindler's List is this? He <laughs> that's a way Who of being like Ryan hasn't even seen it. Spoils, no spoils. Oh shit! Like, what are you doing? Well, you are the one that spoils. He's a it Nazi. Already. You're oh. the. Like when he sees the red sweater in both parts, that's the movie's way without saying anything else that that is. He's like, I got to go to the store and buy that sweater. Fuck. <laughs> He's like, man, that was sale. a good sweater. <laughs> like, and they, yeah, at the end, you just cut to him in, in a red sweater. <laughs> Are you saying Josh Miller should have been wearing uh, <laughs> like his leotard green pants should have been the yes. only green object in the scene <laughs> yes. and everything's black and white and Cody yeah. Culp, our hero of the oh, film. I, I thought they called him Culpey. That was just like a Cody playful nickname Culp, at some point. Right? Somebody because calls him Culpey. Culpey. Oh, Culpey. That's what the Razorbacks call him. Whatever, Culpey. I mean, the Razorbacks are pretty harsh, dude. I mean, that's a tough gang. Let's be honest. When they, when they called him Culp the first time, I thought they were doing like short because I was kind of not paying attention to what his name was. Yeah, you were making Culpey. your bed. I knew it was Cody, but uh, <laughs> you're just making your bed um, for like an hour and a half. Oh yeah, because it's it's one of those comforters that comes off like the you have. Oh, that's put tough. The, yeah, you got to pack yeah. it in. That's yeah. Oh, now oh, you ain't got jokes now, do you? No. But um, I can see it. I've in been the sobered camera, by this. By Ryan's me. bed is made. Yeah, it looks great. You're muted, um, Ryan. Yeah, he oh, is. That's muted. a mute button. All right, no I right. wasn't. I see this. There he goes. I just got confused because over your Zoom it says mute. I'm like, he's hey. muted it, but it's the button to mute you. Huh. I'm fucking a... tricky. <laughs> so you clicked it, and then I muted you. I really oh, wish... been recorded. <clears throat> oh, so what I was saying when when they said Culpy the first time, I thought it was short for culprit. Oh, like I, I thought right. they were like that. that like sense. that's the culprit. That's a fit. That's a good assumption, I think, to make. And, I, and I'm like, why would why would a why would a robot? Make, make up slang like that yeah why would robots make they don't make up slang you know that gym guy That's too i, I wasn't thing. following the gym dude I, was I, well, pam the gym Greer, obviously the pam Greer is like great having casting and stuff but i feel like those two other guys i wish they were like somebody like pam Greer. it was like why is she with these two guys who are like nobodies because they probably spent all of their budget on her <laughs> They should be in big, who, they should be big, Fred big, the Hammer big, Williamson and yeah. uh, Jim Brown. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. B big beefy roles. Yeah, let's Those make are all big the, beefy roles. And yeah, all Hulk the, Hogan. Here's my pitch for the movie that's about <laughs> evil robots in a high school. And uh, the twist is all the robots are black. What do you think of that? <laughs> oh, that's what you're you, doing. What you, I just saw your naming That would be an excellent. I th here's my pitch to black robots <laughs> killing white children. One old Jewish what, man what saying this that, to another that, old Jewish man. The history dude was cre was who was he somebody? He looked familiar. The actor. On Ryan, he's in a bunch of stuff. Oh really? He's just in I, he's like he's in a lot of movies, but he was I not a good which. history teacher, even as a robotic history teacher. Hey, you know, we so kind of pipe, dude. Yeah, that was the cool. Pipe the was pipe cool, was cool, but once he got rid of the pipe, it was done. Um you know, we're we were talking about Lady Terminator the other week, and I feel like we kind of get a Pam Greer version, like what pretty close to what that would be like in this movie. Like if, she, if Lady P Terminator was Pam Greer, I thought Lady, Lady Terminator had a way, a way more interesting premise. She would have been a really good Lady Terminator, I feel like, back in the day. She just doesn't, I don't think she, I, I feel like I can tell that she doesn't know what she's doing and she's like not being directed well. 
and stuff. So she doesn't know how much of a robot to act. That's how I feel like she is ex- until she be actually is able to act like a. Well, I, th- I thought it was a, good because at the end. they were because they were the um, they were just it's revealed. You're not supposed later to that... think they're robots. They're not supposed yeah. to appear as robots. They're supposed but to. But they're, appear first, as they're supposed to be human teachers, and their their original creation was military droids. Yeah. And yeah. um. And, and then like, they just inserted the education program. In the future, so at the there's the Department at the of Education they're, and Defense. They're making decisions. Like, they program them to make decisions depending on the classroom. Oh like, she chose to do karate number one or karate moves number two. Right. Um, <laughs> Which one? <laughs> yeah. Which karate they moves have a do They have a Terminator-style <laughs> flow chart of actions and responses. Yeah. It's like it was like, flavor is of the, ice cream. first they check the threat and it goes through in like that sh- shitty 90s virtual like computer, what, what it would look like to see through the eyes of a robot. And it's just words covering the whole screen. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, is it's, it hostile? It's is it work. calm? Discipline. That's how Robocop and Terminator right, of course. are presented. Yeah, um, that's some of the worst things about these like Terminator style movies and their ripoffs is that, like I was saying before, like in Lady Terminator, like they should just be drones. Like they should be efficient robots. Like they should be efficient killing machines. Does this make sense to make it a guy that walks around and drives a car and smokes a pipe? It's just like a lot of nonsense. Right. Yeah. Um, the guy yeah, said. I don't even need to. He's but got I mean, a million in, megabytes. In this, he said, in this, in his in body. this context, they are supposed to be normal teachers. Like they are right. actually. I think he. I don't think the guy was. I mean, he was always evil. The white-haired guy, the mega tech guy. I forget his name already. No, he's not evil. I mean, he's not just a good a, person. He's he just makes a, military joy, but he's experimenting. But, he's, but it's about no. He's just like he's literally like just. It's not that he's bad. It's like he's like mil, uh, he's, he's bad. He's hawkish. Well, he's bad because the first instance where they're like, oh, they shit, that, innocent people. Yeah, they, they're like, oh, shit, that one of your robots just killed one of the kids. Oh, he we doesn't care. Shut, sure. We need to shut this down. He goes, oh, right, right. No, I'm, <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, that's what made him evil. Yeah. I didn't realize. Also, what was up with that well, one punk? That, the one punk that. Um, uh, what's her name? Greer. You said Patricia Pam Greer. Greer. Pam Greer. She uh, does karate on the kids in the chemistry room. Or maybe yeah. it's the history guy. Karate the one or karate two? two? She does karate one. I want to see oh, what cool. karate two would have been. Ooh, boy. Yeah. I th- Maybe it was the history, but that kid comes in and he he has like an... He's bleeding from the head constantly throughout the movie. The <laughs> yeah. Oh, the guy who's... In, oh, yeah. Remember He's that like first the other car brother. Wreck? That co- no, in... the, co- the guy in the race. No, Hector. Oh, is that what yeah, like, Hector? Hector. This is the guy who. Uh, but he just has a head wound through the whole movie. Yeah, because he's in that like really huge where the truck flips a bunch, and then you but can see a, the dummy. But it's massive just... car crash. <laughs> but it's car just flipping. Blood. And then you just see a dummy in the back. There's not like an like open gash. In. It's just like blood, like a little cut dribbled down. Yeah, he, he didn't have time to go so... to the hospital. He had to go to the high school immediately after his violent car he's wreck. Got to, he's got to get to and class, then, man. And then at the end, they're like, "We can't get through. We can't get through these." Uh, metal detectors so they have to bazooka use an rpg to blow up the metal detectors like bro just walk through them with your gun let them go off well they have a lot of these weapons just lying around it's like why not use them well i just realized like you know what would have been a good reason for them to go to high school and they should have established this is that they should have been selling drugs at high school well that's what he said that kind of he was like i remember when cody used to want to come to school to get free edge or whatever the drug yeah. was called. The, and that's now, like, he want, now he wants to meet me at school to have a final standoff. In all these movies, there's always a futuristic drug like crack. But why do you need to go to high school edge. for drugs? The, the, the effect when you of edge is like your edge. the city, it, why it do you, you feel like you're go edging? to high school? Right, right. Yeah, and why is the government still trying to run a school in this like demilitarized zone? You know well, it's I mean? the federal government. It's right? not. Yeah, it's the. I, I I think it's like the big tech companies. The other funny thing is it takes place in Seattle, and they shot it in Seattle, and it looks really nice. It doesn't look that fucked up. Yeah. When What's they did the motorcycle the chase. Um. What was so, it, so? There's Edge, and what was the other drug? 
Well, there's Edge Nuke and RoboCop too. But- Edge replaced replaced um, some other jet because they're explaining it to Cody once he gets out of prison. Did they're you like, hear the thing that I said that Edge was? That's what it's a guy. It's it makes you feel like you're edgy. That's the effect of the drug. It looked like it. <laughs> also, the I like the scene where he comes home and he tries to turn the light switch on somewhere in the middle, and his bro- his little brother's like uh, right before they play basketball, I think. And his little brother is like um, Angel. Mom is like, pay- Mom forgot to pay the bills. What is her job, and why is she paying bills? Well, she's on welfare. But ninety percent of the state, our government would give up at that point. Yeah, it's like uh, the, the, uh, like the response of the government is so much better than like how we've handled coronavirus and stuff. Like they're actually <laughs> they're doing like something. Still, well, no, the other, the other thing you're forgetting is that it's a private droids. company doing the military. Mm, it's kind of that an argument it. for that, to be honest. I mean, normally I'm against that kind of stuff, but it made a good argument that we should. They're not paying to make the school better. They're paying to, yeah, like they're doing. They're running industrial robot killing machines that fuck everything up. It's not like a a good response. But it's because the kids are so out of control. You know. Well, I think are they? They were just 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 throwing papers in class. (laughs) Oh, and I also like the first day when they when they when they all ran out of school on the after the bell. Yeah, Yeah. school's out. Yeah, (laughs) there's jumping and leaping in the air. Ten people were throwing books like their textbooks. It's like you're gonna need those Uh, for the rest (laughs) of the year. (laughs) That's a really funny thing to do. Like uh, after when you go to spring break, you just throw your textbook biology book up into the air. Um, also what's funny is like they have not all the kids are wearing gang costumes or like cool movie costumes there's like a bunch of just like random nerdy kids just like well they they say like sweaters and shit yeah they like say polo at, shirts at, <laughs> yeah. at this at this they school there was three thousand three thousand and twenty twenty seven um violent students and there was like one thousand and ten innocent civilians yeah yeah, and then so it also has like ten thousand guns. Just nuke the school. Like yeah, yeah. You'd make what psychopath? Just, to, their just kids tell these to kids school. they don't have to come to school. Just like tell if them they don't the, have to go to school. If you're one of the thousand, you're bringing people, guns. Though. Yeah, well, they, like they, bring, keep, they, they bring they bring guns to school, and then they're like, "Hey, you can't bring that gun in here." Then they you like, got to put it in this Tupperware. Yeah, then you get at the end of the day. Sorry about that. Out there, it's like there's only assault rifles too, and that they have. There's no. There's a guns I saw. Or like any you, or automatics rather. What did you think of the robots apartment? <laughs> I was yeah, this I was like, why do they have an apartment? This is why my do they bother with an it. apartment? It was sensible. And they have all their their bang energy drink in the fridge. <laughs> WD forty in the in the uh cabinet Enjoy. above the sink. They live in a barren apartment with no furniture <laughs> and just like they got three chairs. A BD forty. That's really funny. They're like a, like a couple of um they have some dresses and some clothes and like boxes and bags but yeah. what do they do at night do they just sit on the floor why do they have an apartment they at charge all? they're robots well, they got a charge what's well, a cover to make them look real and it's yes, a shitty cover this guy's a multi-billionaire tech tech like giant and they're he like, can't afford three separate well, apartments. they don't need a nice apartment <laughs> right because they no, but are... they all live together that's how they find out something's weird because they're like right. they're all registered in the same. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty lazy like. Over, he's like, oh, let's just get one apartment. I don't know who cares. Yeah, <laughs> like nobody's. Why even get the up. apartment at that point? Just do a fake address. Also, well, was there is was there other faculty members? Honestly, it's a better li- way to lie well, if the you principal. just do fake addresses instead of do one real address. But you have to make it all three of them in one, or like you have yeah, to make yeah, them all yeah. the same. But that's like I such an Ryan's- obvious lie. Yeah, I don't care. I think Ryan brought up a more interesting point, which is That's, like, what did the other yeah, yeah. teachers think of the robots? And that that <laughs> should have been we didn't see them. Like, I feel like this movie should have gone the way of Caddyshack, where they're like, hey, you know, the script we wrote is kind of dumb, but we have this interesting guy, Rodney Dangerfield. Like, let's just lean into him more. Like, let's give him more scenes. They should have done that with the teachers and just made the teachers yeah. bigger totally. characters in the film. But I bet they're I don't think they could because their shooting schedule is probably like really short. Do one scene in the teacher's lounge. Like give yes. us one scene. <laughs> I'm telling you, I want to see a sitcom of these robot teachers. Like yeah. this should be a fucking adult swim show. Just like three, <laughs> yeah. te- three robot teachers and the kids don't know and the other teachers don't know. But yeah, totally. It does sound like a show. 
Like, who's that one actor that's in every comedy? Like Ike. Baron Holtz. Yeah, like he yeah, should try yeah. to hit on Pam Green. My, Mike Epps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mike Epps should be like the other PE coach. He's like, damn, this guy. He's a sub. He's a substitute. They should have a substitute come in. Like, why the yeah. hell do they? What so, psycho <laughs> substitute? Just get a different job, dude, or move out of Seattle. Yeah, I would. I would have just dipped. If or you were, like, if you were a substitute. He goes on a date with Pam Greer, you know. It's just like, uh, yeah, I want to see that. She's just spraying WD forty in her <laughs> pussy. <laughs> just get ready. Hold on for one you. second. I got to lube, lube up. <laughs> Spray. Why I would they, I was there? imagining. Why would it go there? <laughs> why wouldn't it go a metal the pussy? She has a metal pussy, and how's they don't I need fuck her? to have Ryan. sex. They don't need to have sexual. Ryan. I don't understand what's so confusing, right? I would put a metal it the, pussy. You would probably put it right in the sternum where they would put those those flammable tanks right into the chest compartment and then yeah. kept the flammable stickers. Well, how is she going to reach it? She has to stick it through the pussy hole. She's <laughs> yeah. got to stick that she, long she didn't have, needle. She didn't have any like protection over there. She just opened her skin up and then put it in. What if instead of when the guy uh, pulls his face to show the, his computer Furby oh, face so at the beginning? Stupid. Yeah, she does that with her pussy. Yeah, yeah, he goes. He goes. <laughs> but, but it's the same face. Like you see eyes and one million megabytes, and he's just pulling his ass off. <laughs> Malcolm just like a Teddy like, Ruxpin God. inside his body. Yeah. Yeah, this movie yeah. sucked. This movie rocks, dude. It's this movie is okay. I'm it's like got, Goldilocks. I'm looking for like that metal. Yeah, you're That's right. Mr. No, you're Mr. No opinion. I couldn't. I couldn't get. <laughs> I couldn't get past the Goldilocks. Usually, usually, I find something. It got really entertaining when they started fighting the teachers. And when you start, like it was uh, animatronic. See, it wasn't CGI, so I like that stuff. Whereas, like yeah, practical. No yeah, effect. totally. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so much more fun. Did you like? When I the, mean, there the, was uh, some CGI, but when he was like, did walking you like when down the English the teacher uh, spanked the student? <laughs> that the shit spanked. was funny. I like that. Zoot, 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 zoot. Yeah, he's a very robotic arm. Spanked. There's a Sinbad yeah. joke about getting spanked that hard. <laughs> I won't do it on the pod because I don't want to mess it up. But uh, does it take place at a McDonald's? I'm mostly familiar you... with Sinbad's McDonald's material. Mm. No, the Sinbad had a really good special uh, that was on Comedy Central all the time. Where he like, <laughs> oh yeah, actually we when me and Maddie tried to show you and Wendy this William one time at your place, and like the first five minutes are him, is him just dancing on stage, and then we stopped watching it because you're like he's one of the, the best fuck? people I've seen live though doing really? yeah no his special like, is like work. legitimately really funny. Um, yeah, he's a he's a brilliant stand up, but he's I mean I don't need to watch it a, a special I can't. He would have been a good. I don't want to right? watch that in a special. I want to see that live. You know, I don't really like watching yeah, totally. comedy specials in general, Brian you know, for that reason. I think he's kind of Brian Regan. Um, the story about he, Sinbad is that he was um, doing comedy for six months, and then he met a guy who was like, "Hey, you want a headline in this club in Florida?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'll do it." And all his friends are like, "You can't headline. You've only been doing comedy six months." He's like, "Watch me." And then he went to Florida and just like. That's awesome. Did crowd work and just, you know. And then he got Shazam. Use charisma and got Cause Shazam. Kazam is Sh Shaq. Shazam is that Bear and Stain Bears thing. No, no, no. It's a sh it's <laughs> uh it's Sinbad and stars it's called Shazam. Yeah. No, uh, it's the DC movie. They should have cast him as Shazam in the awesome, DC. <laughs> that would have been fucking amazing. A little kid turns into Sinbad. Like <laughs> I just want to see that, that like, movie. <laughs> What I love about the 90s is that... He goes, that Sinbad, guy... and then he goes, Sinbad. <laughs> well, what's also funny in the 90s is like they make he's an Arnold around. Schwarzenegger movie. They make like a huge, big budget film, goes, and they're like, his co-star, Sinbad. You know, like Jingle All the Way. Oh, yeah, That's we got great. That's a classic movie, though. That's Dude, great. And we got a... Sinbad. If we lived in... If like they made movies the way they make them now, <clears throat> Sinbad would be like a huge leading man in comedy. Like he would be like Kevin Hart. He After was his like stroke? Kevin Hart. Kev Sinbad had a stroke? Yeah. Oh. Is that why he kind of dipped out for a minute? It's pretty recently. Like not he has not been seen oh. since. Poor guy. Hope he's okay. Hope you're good, Sinbad. Sinbad. We missed, we missed you. We love you. I miss your text, my dude. Did you see House Guest? Yes. Uh, of course, with Phil Hartman. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, with Polly Shore. Very good. No. I'm thinking of Guest House. Oh, Netflix. the new one. Yeah. Is that a Watch new movie? It. That's a new Polly Shore movie on Netflix. Is <sighs> maybe we should do that next week. Um I'm more of a Hubie Halloween guy. I haven't seen that it. movie is dope. I missed it. I wanted to see it at Halloween, but I missed it. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch it when it's not Halloween. That'd be oh, insane. Man. Yeah, don't spoil that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a great. So you're going to wait. <laughs> Next you're year, get I cannot spoiled, wait. Dude. I cannot wait, dude. It's going to be my good. like. I mean, Halloween I, night. I laughed out loud. See this movie, I didn't. I didn't laugh that much. I wasn't the. the it's action... got a lot of lines, like good, like what, uh, quippy lines, and. Hubie? No, this movie. Oh. Yeah, like when he shoots the history teacher robot, when he kills a history teacher, and he goes, hey, Mr. Bl- Bronson, or whatever his teacher name is. Yeah. Mr. Bronson, you're history. And then he oozes oh, nice. him in the face. That was awesome. Yeah, that was that was awesome when he blew his head off. Um, yeah, and he's like, I guess I passed that class, or something like that, when he blows up Pam Greer. And even the teacher said... Um, the history teacher had that claw hand. That shit was cool. Yeah, um, this is all pre Terminator Two, and it's interesting how they all rip their hands off and reveal they have like a robot arms. Bazooka. You're saying James Cameron they... stole that from class of 99, 1999? Probably. I'm just saying these. This is uh, you know the T two of uh, bad high school kid movies. The thing I you really relate, like. Is you the... relate everything to Terminator. This movie is. I guess I we've realized... only been watching robot Terminator movies oh. type movies. And I started thinking of more. So there's another Terminator ripoff called Man's Best Friend, where it's a dog robot. Ooh, that sounds fun. From the 90s. And I think that like good. A sex until doll the dog? Matrix. A sex a robot sex, dog? A sex doll dog? Like yeah. right, Lars and the, the real dog. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Gosling. <laughs> this guy just fucks his dog. And it's like a po- it's, but it's like one of those like cheap poodles that just like barks like you know you yeah, put a couple and batteries does the back in. Yeah. Oh, sure 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 he's like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. I'm, Boink. I'm in love <laughs> Every, and the whole town is like that's so good I mean it's so everyone's like you, everyone's like I mean it's better than him fucking a real dog I guess <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, let's just if is he's got to fuck a dog, let's just this is a town town meeting not that they all harm have. a real dog. A real, but at least a real dog has like a pussy, you know. This wa- guy's no, a serial it's, it's dog. Better, it's butter. better for the dogs. I'm saying it's I'm saying better medically, for... but what's worse for his penis? Which I'm oh, who cares about. about his dingus? Would could you have could you do like have sex? It does with a enough backflip dogs? while he's inside, and it just yeah yeah <laughs> rips his dick he off. Busts, he busts with a soft penis. Oh, <laughs> been nice. there, my dude. Been there. Um, but uh, fuck. What was, I gonna say? <laughs> what was the thing we were just talking about? Oh, fucking so dogs. Could like you about... fuck enough dogs oh. that you would go to jail? One, yes. one <laughs> dog. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, okay. Are you kidding? It's called bestiality. Why don't you try and find out, Adam. Jeez. Could you, you go to you go to jail for bestiality? Because I guess it's like yes, yes. But it's like it's jail. Illegal. What I'm saying yes. is like. If if somebody but if there was somebody the who lived it's in your in town, different, different states have different bestiality laws. Right. If there was somebody who lived in your town that would not stop fucking animals and and you couldn't get rid of them, like literally, like through any and legal everybody, way, or but whatever, everybody knew. Then you would have yeah you you would have to do a Lars and the Real Girl sort of Didn't situation. Just, I feel no, like no, you just walk with your a dog robot down a, a different dog. street. <laughs> I, I gotta go that way. That's like the. Easy I point. mean, that dude would get harassed. That person Adam is asking. He's it. like, okay, so wait, hold on, hold on. How many? <laughs> well, is it okay if the dog fucks you in the ass? That's cool, right? <laughs> is that bestiality? Remember, like in the Chris D'Elia podcast, where he finds out they can save Snapchat <laughs> yeah. pictures, and he's just yeah. like the look of dread washing over his face. Adam's like, wait, you can go to jail for fucking dogs because Chris D'Elia does like. Ooh, he does like that. <laughs> he makes the ooh face when he hears Oh, that. on that Violently. pod. That's what you're doing yeah. right now, bro. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. You're trying to cover up by talking about Dalia, but we can see the, the cold beads of sweat yeah. pouring stick on with, your face. Just stick with dolphins. Dolphins, I think you can probably talk your way out of that. Yeah. They'll, make, they'll probably because make a the documentary is so about enticing. it. Yeah. No. Dolphin Tale? It's a movie about a kid <laughs> that fucks a dolphin. Dolphins it fucks the tail off a dolphin. Yeah. He takes the the stumpy dolphin tail and puts it right up his ass. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Do 
Do you think they, uh, the robots fucked any awesome. fish underwater when they drove their car off the pier? Oh, yeah, that was cool. Oh, that, that was another funny line. When they're like flying yeah. off the, and they're like, She's I like, wasn't expecting to go for a swim today or whatever. Yeah. That's some robot dialogue. <laughs> That's good robot <laughs> <Yeah>. dialogue. <laughs> but they're funny. Like they have jokes. Why did they, they just hit the humor. break? So that means there's a programmer that's like somebody in the programming room making this robot. Like Siri. And, and they're like, put a yeah. joke in. Yeah. I guess, yeah, Siri it's like a collective jokes. information and stuff thing. It's like an AI. So that they has their its own like. Yeah, they had learning chips. Learning computer brains. Talk okay, about. Ryan. I think it's stupid. Joey. Do you think they fucked any fish in the, the ocean though when they're under there? They're just oh walking, yeah. <laughs> they're just walking around. They yeah, probably totally. don't have parts. I bet they were just like <clears throat> sticking a bunch of fish up their ass. It'd be funny if like when the wrestling coach is in the singlet and they're like, this guy doesn't have a dick. It's just uh <laughs> we got a real got a camel situation toe. going here. Yeah, did they have generals? I was in the military. He does like, what branch? Suit. He's like, Yeah, the military. <laughs> wow, cool. Is that what he said? Because I was not paying yeah. attention to that. He didn't specify. He was like, Yeah, the military. Wink wink. <laughs> like, I think this I'm guy's lying. I think that means that <laughs> yeah. that seems like it's code for gay sex, kind of. What? <laughs> Being in the military, just saying you're in the military are in you a saying, specified are way. You saying, it's like being a confirmed bachelor. All, are you saying all of our military are homosexual? Yeah. Wow, dude. The Iraq Especially, war was just a giant orgy. Like, oh yeah, we're going to the Iraq war. Yeah. <laughs> They're just it's like flying. Just men's, men's room off on the highway. It's we're all like, salute, we're saluting yeah. them in the airports and yeah. stuff and saying thank you for your service. <laughs> Not knowing they're going to a giant orgy. And they're like competing, yeah, and getting medals and getting <laughs> awards. That'd be cool if you went to a Purple Orgy Heart. So, it's so like his dick got sucked off. Oh, yeah. Thank the you emoji, for your service. The eggplant emoji pin. Dude, honestly, Chris that Tucker's would be a better. There. That'd be better. Chris Tucker is there, like <laughs> doing Santa well, for no, them. He, <laughs> we don't know if he's there. He was on the so list. Show. He was on the list. He's like, you guys, you look really happy for being in this war. They're like. Uh, you know, we're just having fun. Hey, we're doing it for our country. <laughs> it's our duty. Yeah. He's like, I haven't seen a smile that big since I flew in this plane with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, that guy's happy too. And Oprah was making me laugh. Chris Tucker's <laughs> just a pawn. Okay, he wasn't aware. I know. He's been like, what's your deal with he's Chris? A he's the real victim. Adam's favorite movie is Rush Hour. <laughs> oh, I'm right there. All three of them, dude. Rush Hour is good but i watched shanghai noon recently and i realized yeah, it's a like, good one too it's kind of like the movie that's made exactly for me it's like a jackie chan oh, movie because which it's I love. rush it's hour but with Wilson. a white guy instead of <laughs> yeah black no, guy i yeah. just love yeah basically like, ah something about that chris Jeez, tucker guy wasn't really doing it for me there's something about this movie said. i don't like that i, I see it's different here's the thing about rush hour <laughs> they made the main character black that's how you know he's a bad guy because of the visual <laughs> storytelling <laughs> I need a nice color coded storytelling right element be, like be, Schindler's be, List. Yes. What was the Yeah, what if the, if the only color in Schindler's List was a black guy? He just sees a black guy that's in color at the beginning and then later at the end. It's Chris Tucker in color. Everything else is just black in black and white. He's like an Ethiopian Jew. Just yeah. like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah. That sucks. What was that? No, other good Shanghai? stuff, guys. What'd you say? There was two Shanghai Knights. And what was that? Shanghai Night Shyamalan. They went to England. Uh, yeah, it was that time. It was the same time period. I read that there was going to be same characters, was, not like uh, post, you know, like yeah, West time. They they go to England. There was the, still there was still like knights and armor and stuff. I think it's yeah. just like a, they're not knights and armor. It's just a terrible pun. Oh yeah, you're thinking like movie. is it like black? Because I don't remember no, anything. I don't remember anything of the second Shanghai movie. There were there was going to be a honestly third Jack, one, but I guess Jackie it's Chan is we've Shanghai talked about Dawn. this Adam Jackie Chan is probably one of the greatest entertainers dude I wish that I I sh I should be like Buster see, Keaton uh uh whoever the other guy with the Hitler mustache uh, Charlie Chaplin Hitler? move over Jackie Michael Chan Jordan. is like, Adolf Hitler yeah <laughs> Jackie Chan is so much better 
He's like um, the final. He's the final form of Charlie Chaplin. That's cool. I mean, if you like fascists and people who side with, uh, I'm not. I'm talking dictators. about. I'm talking about how he dances. Yeah, and, he, he, and, and Jackie Chan is if, the final form. It started with. If the you like Hitler people who are pro secret police, <laughs> anti democracy. He would. Make, Jackie Chan would make the great dictator, but like, not he's the hero. hero. Yeah. Yeah, he's the hero. <laughs> yeah. I don't he's want. Yeah, Xi Ping. He plays. Uh, he plays Xi. Xi uh, Winnie the Pooh guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just but like he's the great sincere. dictator. Yeah, he's, he's great. great. He's great. What are you guys talking about? Um, yeah. Oh, he yeah. Shang- the Drunken Shanghai Fist. Dawn was going to be the name of the third Shanghai Noon movie. What would that have been? Shanghai Dawn. What? I mean, what? Oh, what, uh, I don't know. Here, talk. Like I'll where? look it up. I'll look it up. Texas? I think. No, because they're already Don in Texas. Corleone. <laughs> it was Shanghai D O N. I guess they would go back to China. Um, It'd be funny if we went to Japan and then oh, shit. got China shit. <laughs> yeah, They're every- like, I hate this fucking white guy and Chinese guy around here pissing me off. Sequel <clears throat> Shanghai Nights. Okay. Shanghai oh, Dog. You like my Owen Wilson face? Jackie, what are you doing? Oh, we're talking about it maybe starting in Hollywood and then going <laughs> from there to Africa or the pyramids. Wow. I feel like we have really cool. freedom to take them anywhere and time we want. <laughs> Is what Owen Wilson said. Everything and was going well just like until... time travelers. Yeah, he said that in 2003. So um... no, they're just travelers, right? Well, he's but saying. he just said no. I'm saying he just said they could take them anywhere in time, or that's anywhere. What he, that's what he's saying. I think that's what he's implying. Yeah, time tra- like it, it could have branched off and been a nine you're, movie series. You're 10,000 BC, you know, me and Jackie Chan are building the pyramids. <laughs> it's like they the last season of Jackie Chan's matters. like. We have to enslave no. more Jews. <laughs> this is so, we've got to get it done. He's like, oh, man, we're not going to finish the pyramid in time. Jackie's like, no, just <laughs> let them die. Work them to death. Because <laughs> um, he's anti-democratic. Yes. Yeah, that's why he's not on like talk shows and stuff, right? <laughs> he just says crazy shit, doesn't he? Like, There's not enough talk shows with Jackie no, he's Chan. Just- we we and, talked a lot about this on the Rumble in the Bronx episode, but um, we didn't talk about this at all. Or we talked we about it a little bit. Did. I watched mo- I, w- I watched more videos about this afterwards, where I was like, "This Jackie Chan guy is a real uh, <laughs> you a real know sellout what? for the fucking uh, no, real, really who's it? Um, He's yeah, like, like well, look what well he pro- he saw what happened to yeah. Bruce Lee, and he's like, "Shit, they're gonna kill me if I don't exactly." Find out Bruce that Lee he... dying. Jackie Chan has no career. Finding out that he has these no, uh, that's not true. It would have been bad a, His career would have been getting his ass kicked by uh, Bruce Lee, which is what that it only was. happened once. <sighs> Look, we talked about this on in the a Rumble fictional the movie. Ryan, calm down. <laughs> these are actors. Ryan's like, oh, that only happened once. Okay. <laughs> oh, I would. I'm also. I'm. I'm Movies team Bruce pay, Lee all day. Are, are Bruce Lee would destroy Jackie in a real fight. You kidding me? True. Jackie's always been a performer, but Bruce Lee is like a actual martial art. Like martial artist um is he yeah yeah like he's chuck also norris a was a martial artist well no, yeah he's a, saying, he's also a performer i'm saying jackie chuck norris is, was jackie chan is a... just a performer because he did like, yeah but bruce lee's also childhood. a performer i know but i'm Don't saying yeah jackie but if chan you put just... but if you put bruce lee in mma in his prime and uh, he would destroy and if you put cool. jackie chan be... in mma jackie would do well as well but he would not destroy i don't know i don't know there's if jackie no knows how good to kung fu I'm mma sure. fighter they, that's like, why the... bruce lee would win bruce lee <laughs> but bruce, bruce lee did everything he did everything. yeah he didn't do kung fu he fought he do uh jujitsu he did he invented his own he invented yeah he invented jeet own, kune do that is, that's like the, a combination the counter attack he would just wait oh, for you to punch that? and then he'd Chapa! It seems like Brazilian jiu-jitsu has the lock on the MMA. Because at first, they weren't they doing all different fighting styles? But it just evolved into being like... When it was, what was it called? Prime? No, that was the Japanese one. Prime fighting or whatever it was called? Pride. Right. Did you like, ever watch... I, just, no I never watched class? any of this, but I just know the early version was... We're gonna have a karate guy, and we're gonna have a, yeah. There a boxer, was a dude. There was a, a dude that was like four hundred pounds, and he would just sit on people. We used to watch it. My friend, we'd have a weight class. It was real no fighting. Yeah, this was like the this was UFC. This was like That's awesome. You had to like it was hard to get as a I don't know I was probably six sixth, I, I, I sixth grade fifth sixth grade, and I'd have sleepover at my friend's house, and his dad would 
he would get it. I don't know how. Rent it from Blockbuster or something because it would be violent. Right. Like people would break, they would, they would tanks, like actually yeah. break their arms and yeah. And it, the whole thing was that sounds awesome. It was just caged fighting. You'd just be in the octagon, no weight class, no anything. And there That's was cool. a jujitsu guy who always wore his his white like karate outfit, which was just foolish. Cool. But he would he would use it to choke <laughs> yeah. people out. Oh really? But then I remember, yeah. I vaguely remember there like being a dude, that, a dude that would just sit on people. That's cool. He would just like once he got a hold of you, he would sit on you and just like. I wish it was more like that. Still, so be more fun. Sounds like uh, Street Fighter Four. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, that's you know that's what I'm thinking of. I was just playing Street Fighter Four. <laughs> but uh, there's a guy that could stretch his arms across the. <laughs> yeah. One boxer. Um, right, right, right. So how come they never made a uh, kung fu cyborg movie? Seems oh, like man, that'd be so cool. I feel like you could That's put a ro- a Terminator style robot into any genre. Well, the, because the, what the, what they comedy. do, especially in the '90s, what they do with robotics to make them look robotic is they're not very agile. They're just like this is walking all robotically, and you need to be more fluid. The technology wasn't there when they made Terminator. I agree um, with you. Why isn't there? Sorry, my nephew keeps calling me, fa- trying to FaceTime me. That, that keeps like block him. Please. <laughs> he so calls me like December. three, th- four times in a row when I if I don't pick up. I feel like there is a robot romantic comedy movie, rom com. Oh, you said like karate. heartbeats or whatever. Isn't there like a genie? Um, yeah, no, but that's that's not really AI a style ripoff. AI with Robin Williams. That's more of a dr- drama than that's a bicentennial comedy. man. Oh, bicentennial. <laughs> What's right. AI? AI is about the it's little Kevin. kid. That's like not a, that'd be a horrible romantic comedy. <laughs> yes. I think I'm in love with this. That's an alien. I've been loving this robot kid. So I was bicentennial Lewis. man. Was Ooh, good. this little kid. <laughs> Haley Joel Osment. Want to go um, there, Ryan? Want to do a little riff on that? No, I'm just. That was your Robin Williams impression. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, sorry. What did you just say, William? Can you repeat that? I was I was texting my nephew. Robin Williams dating Haley Joel Osment in AI <laughs> as a romantic comedy. That'd be awesome. Do the voice. <laughs> oh, Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busting in my pants. I'm soft right now, but your controlled blinking is uh, making me all hot. That'd be a great on-screen couple. He rapes that Haley Joel Osment Hale. in a oh, really violent. I forgot he was in that movie, huh? Robin Williams is in that movie too. He plays the the wizard hologram, oh, but he rapes the little kid. He's like, "Come on!" And then he's consoling him afterwards. He's like, "It's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault." He goes, "I know, dude. You rape me." That's <laughs> <laughs> I I know. Don't it's try not to your hug fault. me. <laughs> Um, all right, get, get out, out of here, me. you little knucklehead. You got a blue fairy to find. <laughs> um, who, who's, what's the other movie, uh, like robot movies from that era? Those like K Pax? K Pax is an alien movie. Well, oh, we alien. don't know. Fuck. Well, what's we the other know. alien He's... movie? Isn't the K Pax like another movie from that time? <laughs> trying, to, trying to get something. Well, my here. stepmother is an alien. That's one where the. Nah. The alien is a it's a rob there's rob no robin williams movie where he plays a bicentennial man we talked that's about what we've been already. talking about maybe that's what I was he's a, he's a robot about. that turned that wants to be human <laughs> oh, and eventually yours. eventually he gets surgery to become a full-on human and grow old and die spoiler alert holy shit brutal man it's a good one it's like three hours long though um or it felt. I never like saw it. it. I got. It looked incredibly dumb, so I avoided it. It's good if you. I mean, like, I you know. I like a good. I, I like getting my heartstrings fiddled on every now and again. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah, totally. Somebody uh, fiddle my heart. It'd be cool if you had little strings on your heart and you could put a little bow and just sort of play your heart strings. Literally, yeah, with some that would be cool. Resin. You were a cartoon character. So in this movie, they have a, I don't know if you noticed, but Nine Inch Nails is on the soundtrack. I did see that. I was trying to figure out what the... Hole in the... Head head like a hole. Head like a hole. The director on the commentary is like, well, you know, I was uh, 
walking around Seattle, going to nightclubs. And I see these great grunge bands and I would talk to them and be like, do you want to put your song in the movie? Is this an old Jewish man? Is there, I know you're doing your old Jewish man voice, but is the director an old Jewish man? He's more, he's more of a Midwest, like a oh, okay. uh, nerdy old man. Gotcha. Gotcha. He's like, uh, this movie, uh, kind of prescient. If you look at Chicago, they have, uh, free fire zones where the police won't even go in. And I think in a weekend in Chicago, they kill more people than that's in this entire movie. Yeah. That's, he always ends with like a, fa a fact about Chicago violence. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> we talked about so. pretty interesting take buddy. Dude. I love it when people bring up Chicago violence. It's such a fun talking point. Yeah. Why'd they pick Seattle for this movie? Is Seattle known for that as well? I was surprised it was Seattle because I assumed it was shot mm -hmm. in Canada and that's why it took place in Seattle, yeah. but it's really Seattle. I mean, you see the space needle, you see, you, you, I looked it up. You it's do? actually shot in Seattle. Yeah. The space needles in the movie a couple of times, oh, not when? like prominently. Oh, when they, like, when they're driving, when they, right before that, when they're on that chasing running from the, just, when you, no, there's not really they, city. There's a couple of like establishing shots uh. that are just like quick cuts. But um, remember the scene where Malcolm McDowell and Stacey Keach have dinner together in that like really fake restaurant? Be cool if that was like no, and the space needle, and they just like I actually don't remember the scene. <laughs> yeah, so if I make a I business meeting, bad. I mean it's a very it's a very boring scene, and like Malcolm yeah. McDowell's like, well, you know, the robots are killing the students, and uh, that's you know, troubling. That's and oh, Keach and that's is, when like, he blackmails him. Stacy Keach is like, we're gonna be rich, and he goes, well, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna tell the authorities because you also were a part of a murder, hiding a murder. That scene, is that when he brought it up? Probably. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. The principal uh, was like, I'm gonna go to the authorities, dude, and he's like, you're really gonna go to the authorities because you just helped us hide a body. And he's like, yeah, fuck, right. I guess you got me there. I'm not gonna own up to my mistakes. Yeah, that, the principal is a very <laughs> like, morally compromised character, and I. Um, it's weird I that like he guides the the girl's dad. They don't seem like yeah. a father daughter. Yeah, they just because need, he's British uh, and she's American. <laughs> yeah, that's one. That's one reason. I, I mean, guess that, that could happen. Yeah. yeah, they were if she was in high school and he was like a almost a middle aged man. Dude, I was gonna say um, that Josh, the the little guy actor. He always plays like the little Joshua guy. Miller. Joshua Miller. Hey, is that Angel, the little yeah. brother? Um, Come on, man. River's Edge. River's Edge Give is me in the, the, the Pacific Northwest, right? Yeah. He's in the New Dark's in the Southwest. True. I don't love him, to be honest. No, I didn't like him at all. I don't think he's, he always plays a tough kid, and I don't think he's tough. He well, that's, a, tough he wasn't well, playing a tough, tough kid. He was playing like the cherubic. little brother trying to be tough. I guess. Yeah. He's always like an edgy. No, not that's what his character was. And his older brother Cody was like, "Dude, you ain't tough. You're literally your nickname is Angel. You're a little bitch." And they beat the shit out of him and yeah. jump him in the game. Right? Oh, I see. Blood. I see. I guess maybe I'm thinking that, more that was like kind of cool. Edge. He plays like he's a only a tough guy kid. in the movies. I like. I'm not making you watch the other movies where he just plays like a normal kid. Ryan, you should watch Near Dark. By the way, it's awesome. He's in that. He plays like an, a vampire that's really old, but he was bitten when he was a kid. He's oh, the I oldest vampire, but he's been when he was that. a kid, so he's like stayed a kid in this vampire yeah. gang. Does he have those poofy cheeks? Like he has, he has like such oh, droopy yeah. cheeks. Very, yeah, yeah, pinch yeah. very pinchable cheeks. <laughs> oh, you oh you were saying droopy, not pinchable. Yeah, it's oh, like wow. un, it's like melted. You just like clay. slap him, like, like just like loose, like yeah. give him a little like What's, spank. Is he alive? Hello. Today? Yeah, he's a screenwriter. He wrote the movie Final Girl. Oh, that's cool. What's his name? Joshua Miller. His dad's um, in the action. I mean, he's okay. I appreciate his, him. I just his half brother is in a Lost Boys. Jason Patrick. That's his wow. half brother. That's oh Jason Patrick. Oh, I see. That's why he's in movies. Because his half brother is Jason Patrick. Well, his father's in the Exorcist. Okay. He's a famous director. He's like Beanie Feldstein, um, kind of. Oh, like yeah. He's he just still in movies those. because her family's in movies. Yeah, that's he's still got the little the movies, Oh, he's like bro. a little emo I know, dude. Bro. Ever heard of the Barrymores? Dude, Drew Barrymore in 51st Dates. Forget about it. 
yeah, a chick you could rape every day and never tell the cops. Come on, that's perfect. Perfect, <laughs> perfect scam. That's, right? that's William's fifty first. Just, William Mendoza's fifty first. We're getting. Day. We're, you just rape honestly, her at like eleven thirty, and then like, and then at twelve, she just like falls asleep, wakes up. She's like, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" And you're like, "Hey, how's it going?" <laughs> oh, hey, I just got here. Uh, you know, the, on what's the right run out the clock. Why are you sweating? Run out the clock, baby. The bright side of all this, all this like rape talk is it started with animals. And then it evolved into robot children. And then finally, at least finally, the third time y'all are talking about rape, it's with a human female. Like next time, it, we, eventually we're getting amnesia. closer to just not talking about it. And, yeah, somebody with men, a mental um, illness. Well, I try um, to give a variety to the humor on the show. You, yeah, getting, yeah, you don't want to just do the same variety. thing over and over. We started this podcast with talking about micro sh- shrinking down into a body and licking tongue like, uh, come like snowflakes oh yeah <laughs> just in and a winter like, wonderland there has been cum. no progression just, and then honestly the only diversity everywhere. the only diversity in this episode is when adam trailed off talking about whatever the fuck he was talking about <laughs> <laughs> for like 40 minutes oh no trying like, to get to a in, point it's important to know who the good guy is in the movie that's <laughs> yeah. your Oh yeah. So I feel like I he's like, like I feel the like the point? main character remember. is the way you emotionally respond to the story. And as that the main character is your guy. It's like And depending on what he's shit. wearing. Yeah. If, if he's, he's wearing a leather wearing jacket, thoughts. if he's just, just wearing he's a leather a jacket, guy. it's like, ooh, that's that guy's trouble. <laughs> Some but it was a but it was a woman's leather jacket. Guys. So there was a little bit of um, if he has blonde hair and mean? he's if he has blonde hair and blue eyes, he's a good person. If he's dark and a uh, little brown, you know. Then going, he's a bad going, back, going back, <laughs> How do you to my, tell that a going back to my bad. point about Shanghai being better than Rush Hour. <laughs> oh, that was a good, good part of me talking too. Shanghai at <laughs> noon. Um. Yeah, these are all great parts of me talking that you guys are bringing up. <clears throat> um, Josh Miller. Oh, the kid, the main kid. He What's was up, like, man. He's I like feel like Corey. he was doing a Corey Feldman impression. Like, no way. Wasn't bro. everybody? Wasn't everybody in those? Yeah, uh, in it should. Those it would have been cool if that was Corey like Feldman, Feldman, that character. Yeah, that he better. definitely had a Corey Feldman. Who the He's in, um, Angel? No, the main the little, kid. Oh yeah, Culp. The main kid was kind of boring. He's in Stand he By Me. Yeah, well, that's what, like leading leading actors. I feel like are boring sometimes. Yeah, but he didn't like. He's like the handsome. I didn't. Kid. I didn't yeah. get what his attitude. I, I don't was. think he was top of the list on who they were trying to cast. <laughs> I think it was when you work your way down to Brad, like that guy. You're like a lot of people have said no. Corey Feldman has said no. Kiefer Sutherland. Sure, has said sure. No. But why like, is Corey Feldman saying no? Maybe he, maybe that was when he was like didn't want to work. He's he was probably making Meatballs Four. Kidding. Oh, I see. He was, dude, the guy was making awesome movies. National Lampoon's gotcha, Last gotcha. Resort. Just fucking booking jobs. Like the the beginning scene when he first meets the love interest, the principal's daughter. She is like hitting straight on up, pretty hard. Just flirting hardcore with him, and she says some stupid ass high school joke, and right. he just looks respond. at he just yeah. looks at her, and he doesn't even no facial expression. He just looks at her, and then just looks <laughs> he away. Knows. Look, he's been around the block. Okay, like she's a new student. She's looking to meet people. He's like, look, girl, you want to get involved in me? I'm trouble. I'm That's the coolest. But he didn't, but he didn't even no, show he wasn't that with doing his that. face. He it was, was just not good at acting in that moment. No, that's the ultimate alpha response to a girl trying to make conversation. No, because the way he did it, it made it look like he genuinely was not interested. He goes, like he was an asexual, lady. like he goes, he goes, like being tiny. Yeah, I was like, was it, is this kid a robot? He's for like, a I'm second, I, for a second, I thought she was going to be a robot too. When it was like, this is the principal's daughter, uh, but then I didn't realize the principal wasn't. A robot. Part of like the robot mega tech. Guy. Yeah, good old mega tech. Oh, so come on, mega dude. tech. Dude. Why? You know, I mean, come on. I just hate that. I mean, <laughs> the opening was awesome. I thought, like, the very opening. You couldn't before. think of an actual like, like company, like make a, a more creative. Yeah, sure. It's so on the nose that it's like. Well, it's a very big. But company. It's kind of fun for that stuff to be on the and nose. It's highly technical. technical. Yeah, but it, it was at one point not a very big company. <laughs> yeah, that's like at, it's like to call at yourself one point was... <laughs> when you're a startup. <laughs> I just, I mean, even like, what's a modern day technology billionaire? multi-billion dollar corporation that is that on the head we got amazon um, we got 
Google. Amazon we is got like, uh, it's kind of, well, no. It's not Megatech. Hello. My, Microsoft. 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 It's the opposite. Mega <laughs> tech. Tech. Now you get mega. it. Mega. It should have been mega hard. Yeah. Would have yeah been. The screenplay. Microsoft is, screenplay. Na- is named after Bill Gates' dick, by the way. <laughs> he named his company when after his dick. Yeah. MS DOS is when he busts. <laughs> yeah. From the Microsoft dick as he's he raping a baby robot ryan <laughs> have we done that one yet baby baby puppy robot dog woman yeah. ryan oh, county <laughs> See? the last the last stop is ryan county <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> neanderthals oh yeah the beginning's kind of cool though like that cyberpunky big like prologue that explains what's going on even though it's really stupid um, <laughs> yeah. but that like that so that abstract they're like okay cool this is like a militarized teenage yeah. militarized gang control cool and, then, uh, and i didn't look up what the movie was before i just downloaded yeah, me it neither. And started I'm, watching I'm gonna it. start going in cold as much as that's I that's usually what i do and yeah. then um yeah. i want the cold take i know I and know. then and then i was like okay this is kind of cool definitely robocop vibes how there's different say like sections in each state whatever whatever um i'm into it i'm into it and then they're like but they still gotta go to high school i'm like yeah. what <laughs> no it's like where are the record scratches on the trailer yeah and then like some fun song kicks in. Oh, come on they gotta go to high school yeah our gang members they're the black hearts and the razor heads no the Where black hawks go- but then here's the thing it always the- sounded like they were saying black cocks the black <laughs> saying black hearts and they all had heart tattoos oh i see uh, so i heard th- like three different i heard black hearts and then i heard black hawks at the end he just has a cock tattoo on his I'm the, chest we're the black dicks man come on <laughs> no and then there was another one where it was the black something that i didn't I didn't the hear that. No of black cocks. <laughs> the blacks. We we dress formally. <laughs> We're the black jacks, and he has like a little jack. Like Dude, they would not. Jack. That'd be that'd be way too conservative to wear black socks for these people. They're wearing Somebody the funkiest purple underwear. underwear. That's what would make it punk rock, dude. Yeah. I could get my purple tidy whities and go to high school. Yeah. Wear my uh, that shit my was bowler so hat. And then when they're at high school, they were just doing. Like that, literally, the kid that gotten that was chasing Cody down and shooting him with thirty of his friends, and they Hector. flipped and got a crazy car accident. Was just chilling with him in class, first period. Go way back to middle school. <laughs> he always thought he was really cool. You see, yeah. he was only chasing him and firing machine guns at him because <sighs> he wanted to be his friend again. This was how I don't understand how the script got passed. Anything. Didn't you think it was beautiful Dude. when the two gangs came together at the end? He's like, look, man, yeah. if there was no robot teachers in there. We're gonna have a gang fight outside this high school. It is beautiful when gangs come together. Picked up his RPG rocket launcher, firing into the high school, and they're yeah. just riding their motorcycles. Remember the uh, concert that he also, goes to, where people in the audience are just cars. shooting their uh, yeah. People are just shooting like they're. They Uzi's do that in the in Middle air. East. That's real. Nobody Dude, was. That'd be awesome nobody, if you went to a concert and people were shooting Uzis. It's in the cool air. until someone gets shot in the face. Right, but they, that would feel like a genuinely dangerous concert. You ever go to a concert that feels genuinely dangerous? I, Rare. Why would I want a concert to feel simple plan? Nineteen ninety dangerous. Because well, well, not that you want to, but like it can make it a kind of a, uh It's like it is happening. Oh, it's, it's kind of like a, it's like a rare treat to go to a concert with <laughs> gunfire. In no, the audience. no, not gunfire. But that would be intense. It's like riding oh, a motorcycle. No, no, or- no. Doing something extreme. A motorcycle. Going into the what pit you, at a day at a an violent. Adrenaline. You're show. talking like an adrenaline rush, yeah. I'm just. What talking, are you talking like, about, Adam? Have you ever I've been, been to, to a I've been show? to shows where there's been a lot. Yeah, I've been to. I'm not saying. Are you saying is it? Are you saying this is like a plan thing? I know what just, you're saying. It's no, still well, stupid, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying I endorse it or anything, or I think it's cool or whatever. I'm just saying like. You go Listen. to sh- shows when you're a teenager sometimes or like whatever, or you go to like a r- random show that's not like, that's like somewhere unusual. Right, right. And it's right. like weird. And like, this, I think there's a bunch of Nazis hanging out in this. Not show. Nazis. Listen, I, I show up to a show and if there is not danger, I make the danger because yeah. I want people to have a formidable experience. <laughs> you guys will remember this for the rest of your lives. Adam's just, bow, 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 Adam's just deep throating bananas and throwing the like a, in the audience. It's a dashboard guys, confessional man. acoustic concert. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, punk, <sighs> you know, punk shows like dashboard confessional. Um, 
did you guys ever go to what is the most dangerous concert you've ever been to dangerous feeling concert um, or the most intimidating or like kind of just d weird like you know what i'm saying like yeah i, I mean know. i've been Why to is a lot, so hard there's been a lot of i I'm know what you're to saying talk it's about something not, interesting it, it's, it's so not though but i get what you're saying i went to uh i went i saw mgmt at the greek theater and the parking, <laughs> the parking in the lawn that was pretty fucked up dude some guy jumped up the curb on accident and knocked over one of the meters it was fucking crazy <laughs> it's crazy the most dangerous thing was flying everywhere the most dangerous thing I ever had a, experienced at a concert is when I took acid and saw fish and then drove home high as fuck from like <laughs> right, Inglewood. Right. That was Dude. pretty dangerous. Nice I, drank, I drank old milk before I went to, uh, I can't think of it, some emo band. <sighs> that really? was like that a straight. It was like a straight edge emo old band. Milk? And I went to it. It's a bad night. I didn't know it was <laughs> old. I didn't know it was old milk. Those are kind of similar. Because I, uh, like I didn't drink at the time, and I was puking in the urinal, and it was the most disgusting urinal. It was the perfect compliment to the show. So I, I could have got like typh, typh, typhoid. It, you're, it was like that scene in Train Spotting where he has to go into the toilet or whatever, but it was you puking up old everybody, milk at an emo every, show. <laughs> everybody was looking at me because it was like a straight edge show, and I was puking oh. in the bathroom, and everybody was like straight looking like they, the they were just so people. disgusted with me, like they thought I was drunk puking. Well, and I'm like, I swear it's bad milk. Yeah, they're so judgmental. They're like uh, <laughs> yeah. Maud Flanders. They hundred. I don't know who that is, but Ned Flanders or like you know the church uh, Reverend Lovejoy's wife on The Simpsons. No, that's what that's straight edge people so, are like. like. You, know, you know, you know, Maud Flanders is no. Okay, let me. Uh, what about Reverend Lovejoy's wife? <laughs> Another <laughs> extremely minor character. <laughs> but you know Reverend Lovejoy. I didn't even right? watch the. Probably. I know. I forgot that I'm talking to you Mr. Know, no. What about Millhouse's mom? Dude, I oh. was when you were growing up watching Simpsons. I was going to dangerous concerts. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. You're like the little kid, and you're Josh Joshua Miller. I'm Angel. I'm I'm gonna get beat in, or I'm gonna get jumped into the gang. Yeah. You want to play some basketball? That was a heartwarming scene. Him and two brothers playing basketball like, hey, man. angel angel they angel. obviously couldn't play basketball and that was the last time they ever saw yeah. each other and now he got punted across his own yard against <laughs> yeah it's like when uncle phil throws jeffrey out of the house <laughs> on fresh that Prince. scene that scene was awesome yeah honestly oh, the movie man. got good when they went full military robot when they just started murking yeah. people and then there was like good vfx stuff <laughs> Yeah. So, so Ryan, are you saying you agree with my theory where if the movie focused more on the robots, it would have been better and less of this melodrama with the gangs? Um, no, because then it would just it should have just been a different premise. Like, like again, the whole thing was the premise was these kids are so were, bad and unruly, what if they were but they a, still choose to go to school. What if they were in like a prison high school? That, that would make more sense. And they were prison gangs. That would make more sense. So they made a sequel to this movie called Class of 99 2. And it stars and it Sasha Mitchell, Uncle Co like Uncle Cody from Step by Step as like That'd the teacher. Awesome. <laughs> and but it's incredibly thing? shitty. Oh, wait. This is Class of 1999 2 is a real movie? Yeah, it's incredibly <laughs> oh shitty. And there's a scene <laughs> where like a bad Uncle, title. Where Cody like. <laughs> Why wouldn't it be Class, class of 1999 2? Yeah, part exactly. Two. Part 2. Oh, it says part. It's part two. Class of nineteen ninety nine. Any of the same characters? That's that's no. okay, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's not like him. Two, they, so they could have just made it class of ninety nine, but then did a Texas version. Class of ninety nine, Texas. Class of ninety nine, Detroit. Oh, that's class cool, of ninety nine. Because they, they showed universe. like they showed like fourteen different. It is. It's class of nineteen ninety nine too. The substitute. And Sasha. Oh man, Sasha Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the, it's just an escaped robot who is who is still military but this time the robot's good the teachers well, are they just good. do the program again well no this is this is class of 99 the substitute and the substitute is an escaped military droid that has said, an educational program but but wants to be a good teacher and actually educate people so hides goes into hiding and then becomes a substitute and travels from country to country while Me megatech is I chasing like him that's a good idea. Then, I love it's a heart, this, but it, hypothetical sequels. By but the it, way, it's a heart. But this is a heartwarming. It's not an action. There's like no violence. This is like going into an inner. A teacher goes into an inner city and saves a, a group of kids through oh. drama class. Oh He's yeah, just a fish out of it's water. Like like they don't know. Or like, uh, but uh, they don't know it's a military man. droid teaching them. 
It's like that that Danny DeVito movie, Renaissance Man. <laughs> yeah. Where he's like and a then, teacher. Or de- like Dead Poet Society. Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, one like of the kids, like, school. yeah, the teacher, the teacher's pet catches the robot, like looking into the mirror, lifting up its face. Or WD-40. Then, like, the kid's like, oh, you're a, mili- a Megatech Milidroid. Oh, he's from Megatech. And he goes, no, I'm your substitute. <laughs> and then it's like, and he's gotten them all to stand on their desks and like be inspired <laughs> again and shit. That'd be cool. He's like reading, he's like reading poetry. It's just like <laughs> yeah. the instruction manual for an alarm clock. Yeah. He's like crying and weeping. So like, See, that would be a better a good robot. That'd be a good 1999 robot part two. Dead the robot sub- society. No, and then just... finds love in the in the teacher's room. What is that called? The teacher's, teacher's lounge. Lounge. Finds love with, Ike, with one of with, with the Ike art Berholtz. teacher. Yeah, and that's the art teacher. It's a gay romance. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. yeah. Of course, I mean naturally. I had a I had a gay art teacher in high school. He was cool. Oh, nice. Time. That's cool. And um, it could have. I bet we could. <laughs> I'll I'll trail him down and cast him. And what then, if was uh, like, what a, was, Ryan, what if it was a romance with like a dog that he found in the neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> because he's a robot, he doesn't know. He just he feels love. He just knows love. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And then you he have, just starts fucking this dog because he's a dialogue. robot. He has no, a he doesn't know that he's wrong. <laughs> As an audience, you're like, this is wrong. But then there's a huge dialogue where the dog is like, all I know is love. All it's I know, all I program. It's black so, and, and white. It, it's just a pink poodle that he's just violently. <laughs> and uh, Liam Neeson's looking through the window, leap, like just weeping. He's just, just like, crying, crying and he just goes, "Hail Hitler!" One all last I remember it was before. that thick sweater of the of the dog that the robot was fucking. Yeah, so let's he write just, this picture. He just throws the dog in the fireplace, burns it. Yeah. Um, and then the final oh, cut scene, the final scene really? before credits, it goes, I guess I'm getting a cat now. <laughs> oh, I was thinking it'd be really funny if at the end of Schindler's List, he was wearing a red sweater. Like he, he would just, t- he just took away from that, that he thought it was a good sweater. No, he was like, wa- he's walking through um, Berlin and he just like stops, does a double take and he looks through a window and there's just like a, a, a store and there's like the, be- like the little pink cardigan or whatever. And he yeah, just like yeah. goes in and puts it on. And it, like fits so great, he's like, yeah. <laughs> you just see him like at a restaurant, just like watching movies, just wearing the sweater, just just relaxing. Or no, like he run, or he just runs up to the girl and her corpse, and he just like opens, unbuttons the sweater, and takes it out. He's like, okay, good, all right, run the machine, and just like all the bodies. Stop go. the That's press! Like, yeah. Stop the press! It's like a super suspenseful <laughs> scene where he's sweater. running through the factory. Stop the press! <laughs> And they stop it, and the kid, <laughs> the kid is still breathing. Like the, yeah. the kid is like, "Oh, you saved me!" And he just um, takes the sweater. If it like, wasn't the Holocaust and it wasn't that little kid, it was just like a guy, and, like getting fed into a conveyor belt thing. And that would be like a Monty Python like sketch. I feel like of of Eric Idle just like taking the sweater off and letting the guy go in, but because it's Schindler's List, it's like. <laughs> what do you do to be sweater? Because it's about like one of the most traumatic. I'll take that. Thank you very much. All right, go ahead. You can't take what? that sweater. No, I, I thought you were gonna take me. It's, it's like no, you know, it's ridiculous. Big foot smashes it. Yeah, totally. Um, I give it. I give this movie two and a half stars. I don't think I gave my rating at the beginning. I I'm sitting at a two. That's fine. I think. I, 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 it took me it took me until the last like 20 minutes to actually be like okay this is kind of cool it's pretty entertaining that was that say. was after i really had had a mountain dew off. so I, I think most of it was the mountain dew that made me feel good <laughs> you're just like man this mountain dew is getting really good you're just rating as <laughs> what you're it's kicking in mountain the dew's dew. kicking in <laughs> yeah um the pre- yeah, that premise I, just pissed me off too much I took me out of premise. it it's really funny how stupid it is i like how I immediately it falls I, apart <laughs> See, like I couldn't, I couldn't get behind. Like I, I get it. Like those are funny. So maybe the thing is, I but it wasn't already, entertaining, funny to me. I've already seen Class of 1984, so this is the reverse. So that. I'm ready for this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. you know, I've seen Class of 1984. Fifteen I like years later, Greer again. Wow, great! 
Great. I, I mean, I sorry, sorry. I, go ahead. I, sorry. I, I got a job on a fucking morning radio show in nineteen ninety. Honestly, I, I would get. <laughs> I did. I I love seeing Pam Greer again. It's always nice to see. I'm like, hello, talking to the screen, of course. But I would, I would have always enjoyed nice to see spending an hour and forty minutes just looking at a picture of Pam Greer on Google more than I did this movie. She's the. Goes. It's just an hour. My eyes are water and bloodshot. Tears yeah. are kind of coming down, and I'm just looking at the same picture. This movie's a bone killer. You know, I'm gonna go down to 1.5. It's a bone killer. No, no, because the action at the end, and it was cool because it was the practical effects are cool. So the I'm thing is, I don't. The, my least favorite part of the movie is the action at the end. When all well, the, the action sucks, but the, the I like the practical what's effects. What's your favorite like t- like t- punk de- like delinquent gang movie? <laughs> William. Class of 1984 is pretty awesome. That's like a four and a half star movie okay. on a exploitation movie scale. That but, sounds pretty um, good. Punk. I mean, Clockwork Orange, of course. Yeah, that that's so cool that, that Kubrick, that's why he's the man, I feel like, is because he's so influential in these ways that I feel like you don't. Oh, totally. <laughs> the look, do you like are you talking about like the look of the how the look of the clocker orange guys then became the influ- like influential new romantic culture in ways yeah, that are kind of I subtle wasn't, i watched that movie like the new wave guys dress like the clocker yeah. orange guys yeah totally and but the androgyny of it like you were saying in totally. this movie has totally what if i told you adam that stanley kubrick <laughs> stole all of those ideas from, from another where? movie from funeral movie? parade of roses a japanese really? movie yeah he Damn. stole he just stole He's not stealing, but he's using his reference. But yeah. So is he stealing or is he not stealing? Nice. No, I mean, he's stealing. Okay. He does like the fa- like the fast forward sex scene happens in Funeral Parade of Roses, but they're stealing, but they're robbing a store, and they play the music really style. fast. Style, like the electronic music. The character is very one shit. eyelash. Oh, I've seen those comparisons. Oh, really? I didn't like Clockwork Orange when I watched it in high school. Everyone, but it was. I watched it with like all the stoner kids, and they were like, "Dude, this is like the greatest movie." You smoke and then weed and watch it. I have. Or did? Oh, you didn't. But you didn't. <clears> but you're like a sensitive. Or I think guy. I was smoking too, but I didn't like the rape scene. I, I was like, "You guys are dre-, like my friends were dressing up as characters <laughs> that raped people for Halloween. Like they would dress up as. I had a friend dress yeah. up as a clockwork well, orange guy, and I was like, "That's a rape. You're not guy. a rape guy, Ryan. You, it's kind of like don't, Charles. Manson you don't think rape is cool Nazi and funny in movies." I don't think it, I don't want to watch it in anything. Like, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, you're not a rape guy. <laughs> I'm not a rape guy. I just want to go on the record and say that I am also not a rape guy. <laughs> well, the Adam, dialogue. I'm, on, I'm with the, Ryan on. on listen to the Sallow sense. episode, and Ryan, or Adam is pretty. I just think it's like with the rape jokes about <laughs> as far old as man with one uh, eye. As far as humor goes, it's not one that eye. creative. As Lazy far as shock eye. humor goes, oh, it's yeah, not yeah. that it's not that creative. And as far as like um, being a, enjoyable to watch, it's just ain't. Well, it's so like you're saying it's your a penis device. was soft and you didn't bust. See, that is better. No, it was hard and I didn't bust. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. You're that's, excited to hang out. You're you're looking yeah. at your friends. But that's yeah, the I biggest having, insult. I, was, I love friendship. I love hanging out with friends. The biggest insult is but to no, be hard and, also and not the, bust. The Ooh, movie was just so it just kind of was slow, and I hate it. Seemed like it was trying to be just too like arts. cinematic. And I don't think you like cool seventies like... movies. No, a part of the reason why I didn't pick nineteen eighty four was I don't think I thought the pacing of that movie would bother you more than the pacing in ninety nine. Because it was like a better movie. See, like some movies are meant to be art, and some movies are meant to be entertainment. It's not and, art. Uh, uh, yeah then so it's just entertainment but it's not entertaining to me i mean it's it's creative choices in pursuit of a specific <clears throat> like like making a product to sell but like trying to make it interesting and shit like I don't know. Well, they want you to feel certain emotions and certain <laughs> i didn't things. see what like what were they trying to what were they trying to make <laughs> yeah what, <It's>, uh... <laughs> What were they trying to make us feel? Some movies are products, you know. It's like they're, <laughs> they're like they're investing money and then they're trying to make money. <laughs> Basically, and then you got to tell a story, and it's like, well, I'm saying up. like you know, even like 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 movies that are made for entertainment purposes, like, like they're doing trying to they're trying to be X-Men. interesting still. Were you going to say X? But they're not as no. I'm saying like modern movies like that. I think are less so than like these movies. 
I think because every modern movie, movies are more every movie's co- corporate intent is controlled and focus tested. Right. Yeah, and, but uh, like one thing I like about this movie is that they don't make movies like this anymore. Yeah. Like there is no low budget trash exactly. action yes. category on Netflix or like yeah. Blumhouse movies kind of try to Shutter has that kind of but they just don't they're but they don't have the yeah. budget of this movie. Yeah. You know, they're not as big as this movie. They don't have um and also they're even like the one thing I like about this movie in terms of like this like I'm nostalgic for is how dumb the movie is. Like the movie being dumb, <sighs> yeah. I think is a benefit because it's like no I movies today I think are over, to spend on they're overthought <laughs> and overwritten. And I like this era of like late 80s early 90s definitely like, overwritten movies are oh way overwritten these days. like a straight to video i played at a few theaters but like a straight to video kind of movie could have like this much action this much violence be this ridiculous and just be like like this kind of category is kind of <laughs> gone from movies yeah like at it, this it, budget there's just so much there's so much control but, well you know because like movies are there's less of a middle Tier it, did movie. they make any of their money back? With the only the only the only companies that could make big this movie didn't make any money because the company went bankrupt and the uh, release got botched. What the fuck? And it also was it would not have blown up. Like yeah, there's a reason bad. they're not making movies on budgets. Like Sometimes this these because, movies do blow up though. Well, people like, also figured out right? you can make an amazing movie. You can make an amazing movie on a tiny budget. And you can make like an award-winning movie anymore. People yeah, just got wants, better at making. It's hard to make. It's hard to make genre movies though on a award-winning movies aren't necessarily good movies. It's hard yeah, to make a true. genre movie on a but small. Then, it's like, small oh, budget. it won an award. It sucks. It's boring. But like, as um, what was that Rodriguez movie? That was pretty action-packed. But the, this is why. This is why that the that there's no there's that not there aren't like these movies grand. anymore because genre movies are are expensive to make like something that's like a comp- competitive genre movie, like. It has you have you have to put money right, right. into like it. a modern equivalent of this movie would be like Judge Dredd. So like there's like a, indie that's films, a giant that are like budget, small budget, and, and like Judge the Dredd gang is Judge like Dredd that. is awesome. Yeah, right. But I'm saying like that's wanna, it's re- that movie lost a ton of money. That movie lost more money than this movie. I want to see Judge Dredd had Rob Schneider in it. Rob but Schneider. Yeah, was the I'm talking about Dredd, but yeah, Judge Dredd. Dredd, also. Dredd. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm but yeah, these like the also the only studios that can make these big these like satisfying genre movies are make them they have to make them they make them very expensively but they're also like very controlled because like like when i edit for like big companies and stuff like there's so much um control of the brand and product and like it's all like kind of like like you there's a lot of producers a lot of people and different like departments and stuff and so like things won't be as weird it's like you know it's like it's just like Like the stacy keach thing is not going to happen in a new yeah Yeah, the, the idiosyncrasies aren't going to be there, and it's going to be like over how... cooked, you know, and like just kind of bland. Like, right? Because the other thing to remember, and the reason, another reason why these movies don't exist anymore, is because what basically happened was they figured out a, they would make their money up front, so they would figure out like it's five million bucks, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend three million dollars and then the main producers are going to keep a million like two million bucks for themselves and then they would sell it to like video stores in the international market which would cover the cost so they were they weren't planning on making any money and they started and the more money they made was based on how much they didn't spend and how much they like basically stole from the budget and then they just they just the budgets got lower and lower and they just like drove it into the ground and it like if so it's it, ultimately it, it why it failed. sounds like somebody got whoever was giving out these budgets got smart and we're just like no how about i give you three million dollars because you're just gonna corrupt you're, you're gonna just pocket two <laughs> like you ever heard of <laughs> right, like right. puppet master so, and demonic toys and full moon no. full they, would moon features. Their, they would have all their videos at blockbuster <laughs> in the early 90s oh yeah those uh, those were all great presences at blockbuster, so, at blockbuster video those movies would have a budget of half a million dollars and then they would have guarantee sales sales to blockbuster and then they found out and i think universal was bankrolling them then universal found out like they were just pocketing like 200 grand each on every movie and shooting them in like eight days and they're like yeah we're not giving you any more money you guys are fucking (laughs) you guys are just robbing the the budget movies are like are not great 
but, but they like, are maybe more creative in the sense of stupid stupidity yeah yeah they're more interesting i think i, I don't they think are so. no, no well like modern movies that's their main issue i think i think the whole i think the whole marvel universe is way more interesting a single 30 minutes out of one character in anyone in the marvel i'm just saying marvel for because it's like the most popular thing or star wars franchise even, hey, even the no shit argument for me ryan is way have, more you have won the, the episode <laughs> thank you just, i mean <laughs> like you're enjoying more because it's nostalgia you even said it yourself no well no I know, I don't you're right it's, for it, but I there's not like any, it. there's not like any I character they're more development they're there's more not in, they're any... more edgy they're more interesting they're less for kids and shit i think usually um, this is about kids going to high school but they're less like made for kids. They're more like it's for big kids. <laughs> These are for big, big boys. That's what I'm trying kids. to say, yeah, hey, kids who shop at Toys R Us. Hey man, when I saw Ant Man two and the Wasp, <laughs> so good. Captain Marvel. I, you, you, when you go movie. to see these I movies, seen, I uh, seen Captain Marvel. When you go there, I don't think I've seen Ant Man in the Thor Wasp. in the Dark World. Going Just to see like, these movies, I'm the on a theater. I'm on a journey. You feel you know, like you're seen. a child, like the watching, or you feel like you're watching a movie for children when you like. I feel like that when I watch those movies. That's I definitely felt it when I was watching Ant Man and the Wasp. I felt like I was like watching a children's movie. I guess I, I also like watching all of those, even if they are bad. Because they're fun. I, nostalgia I like from reading the comments shit. as a kid. So oh, hold on, it's I like the same thing. It's the same thing you were saying. I guess. Lot. Yeah. Um, you know, right. I mean, you know, Adam. You need to put your finger up in the air and be like, "Look, I like stuff for children. I need good guy, you bad guy, and a half. Give me I mean, good not because guy, I'm, guy. I'm stupid. Um, I don't know. I it's they they can have their own. Uh, charm and Look, stuff, of course uh marvel but, movies uh yeah it's like some, some are good some are awful but total. uh they're really no different that's than natural these exploitation movies sure and that's like a case of it being done that's as good that's a good example from like modern shit but like there's a lot of bad i think i just think nothing beats a good book a tall glass of wine and a good book oh, yeah <laughs> what an intellectual guy what i like to do at Very the end of the day come to my apartment with no furniture Spray some WD forty in my pussy and just the book <laughs> right up there and just uh, stare out the window at the space needle until I get to teach high school the next. Oh, time. I did if like the could... scene where she explained women when she was going through their closet and she goes, "Yeah, they have women panties. don't have more she, than one. She goes, women just have one bras. Bra. <laughs> they have women have a lot of bras. Stuff, you know, dildos. They have uh, <laughs> look. What, what you Playgirl need to magazine. About women is we have a lot of bras." It's like maybe you should pay attention to the fact that there ain't even a bed in that room. You're looking yeah. at her bra. <laughs> something's weird about something's this. Off. There's, There's three folding chairs in There's the no living room. The woman has only one bra. With some sort of tanks That's... steaming. The tanks are steaming in the living room. That is definitely like the issue with the writing of this movie. I feel like it's like this stupid. And it's stupid in that way. Where it's like obviously yeah, what... it's retarded. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's not about making sense of the world. It's just about moving from scene to scene and yeah. making it uh pocketing two million dollars. Oh, okay. yeah, million stealing budget. money from the budget and making it stupid. Would you guys Hey, I have a great idea. What if instead of a set they have no furniture and we could save a lot of money? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Would you guys um get a would you guys get a cyborg implant that would let you read a book Absolutely. by shoving it into your into the implant if it was a pussy, like my pussy. You'd have to shove it into your cyborg pussy. If it was, I, if, if, I would just read the book. Yeah, really fast. Well, like book? Get cyborg eyes. Well, you know, just because like reading books is like, Are, is that our only cyborg? Hard and not fun. <laughs> reading books is fun. It's reading hard. Is, is, uh, <laughs> you just you know, said like reading's hard. hard. <laughs> As he picks if, his toes. <laughs> Reading and eats a banana. Wouldn't it be great to be able to shove it into a body part? You are a freaking caveman. Yeah, I read that book. (laughs) I read. I read right here. It's just like a sopping wet, (laughs) vagina smelling book. I read that. Ask me anything about War and Peace. I read it. I read it. Okay, I haven't read that. Pass it over here. <laughs> as, he, as you're secretly shoving it up your ass. At, yeah. as oh, I hate reading. This is so much it. more. This is so much more enjoyable. Convenient. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to read. <laughs> Are you saying that's our only cyborg implant? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's foolish. Yeah, I would get it. Though. But yeah, you'd have to shove it up your ass. 
I would do that with Shanghai Nights. A book. I would not want the, to watch that movie. Scr- I'd rather just shove it up my ass and be done with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you don't have to waste like the hour and a half. You can you can do something else with your time. That's the benefit that we're. Sounds like a bad Adam about, Sandler right? movie, like Click. Dude, that was a good one. I've saw, I've seen a couple of Happy Madison movies recently, like A Hot Chick and stuff. That's yeah, but just what, save yourself for Hubie, dude. All right. You don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to watch wait. it out of. Don't watch it out of season. Trust me. Oh, of course. Oh man, God, you need that Halloween. You know, really great, like Halloween. You spirit need your candy corn with Hubie Halloween. Your uh, fun size Snickers, butterscotch. Oof, yeah. Hard candies. I'm a I'm a fun size candy guy. Just always have a dish of it out <laughs> at my house for guests. <laughs> you don't have any guests. <laughs> Oh man! Beautiful spread. No, I'm making a spread. That's I got spread size no size to, no to, to so about, I just have a spread, and no one to no one to give it to. So I just have it have it myself. I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> have a little treat. Miniature peanut butter cups. That's the shit right there. Yeah, that's the jam. I love I love uh, Reese's Puffs. The cereal. It's I really just cereal. honestly it's one of the best. A, a handful of spinach, a glass of wine, and a good book. <laughs> nice, like wet spinach. No, yeah, because it's been in the fridge for too long. No, you know, like when you ate that really wet, gross version of spinach, it's like, it's not like a spinach leaf. It's like really wet spinach. <laughs> Adam, that's bad <laughs> See, spinach. Seaweed on the ocean? No, like Beach. boiled or something spinach. That's like all like, you just feel Frozen like you're spinach? eating like this. Collard like, greens? Maybe, I don't, you don't know what I'm talking about? With like garlic and I mean, there's salt. Lots it's of really things good. you could be talking about. Yeah, you just William, talk, you, you just said get, boiling spinach. Uh, yeah, when it's like the really wet spinach, isn't that gross? <laughs> <laughs> if you're talking about collard greens, no, there's some really good. You can, if it's made well. Uh, what are you Popeye? Yeah, no, I'm saying that it's good. <laughs> it's good, but it has its place. Or it has its time and place. That's all. Bold. I'm saying. Bold. <laughs> that's my opinion you Very said it boring. earlier that i don't have take... an opinion mr no opinion you called me or something like that. i don't like wet spinach. i have a fucking opinion i don't opinion. like wet spinach <laughs> i'm sick of this shit on the record with adam bowers i've been trying to say this shit for years i don't like no one will spinach. listen to me finally well, we're not listening to you because you don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> i know hey i know what i'm talking you're about. like i do not like wet spinach. i'm talking so, about a you thing know I mean? wet when it's spinach is wet. we're like we don't i mean you could be talking about many things we don't know what you're talking what, about is, are you talking about dipping spinach in water because that's well, weird that is, you, it definitely has been, been in water it's wet <laughs> it's really fucking wet that's what i'm seaweed. saying you're talking about seaweed there's so many ways to is cook it canned spin- spinach is that what i'm thinking about it's like probably a, it's in a can so it's like got that, <laughs> See, that wetness. in the comic book popeye didn't like spinach, but, in the, but in the cartoons he loves spinach yeah popeye well, spinach he, like he loves the, he loves the power that the <laughs> spinach like, gives him he's yeah, addicted he's to the, the power. dom he's the dom of the spinach because if somebody a dom sub relationship if, with if adam turned into popeye after eating wet spinach he would he would love it I would fucking be eating a lot of wet yeah, spinach. Yeah, he likes to... <laughs> just gotta be short, honest. Adam's a shortcut guy. I would guy. take back everything I say about, about wet spinach. Adam loves a shortcut, you know. No, I mean, I for love, sure. He I doesn't mean, want to read a book. He'd smart. rather shove it into his ass. <laughs> it's called working ingest, smart, not hard. Just <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds a lot harder than reading a book. Shoving a book up like, No, if it was like doable. Why didn't you just read like, it? Like if a you had a cyborg slot, thing. You could, if you had a specific Adam slot. Shot. Yeah. They're like, why didn't you just read it? He's like... Well, it's so long. They're like, it was a restaurant menu. It's like, <laughs> well, it guess what? I, I got to gotta double two. check this receipt really quick. They're like, <laughs> Just, Adam, you're going to read your fortune cookie? You're like, I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. yeah one like second. a USB slot? Yeah. yeah. One second. You could just read I, the Oh, I hate things. reading its fortune cookie. It's so long. I guess it's, it's so like much time. would you get a USB? And what if you're if you were a robot and you had and yes, the way you could easily. like download yeah, information yeah, to your brain was through yes. a USB stick, but it the Cyberpunk, USB stick was Cyberpunk deep in your style. ass. You or the, the port was deep in your ass. So you had to put the USB stick in your ass. Why would they make that? Why would they make it like so that? It has think... to be attached to the back wall of your <laughs> of your ass. Rectum. 
Yeah. Why would they make it like that? Your G spot is the only one. The male G spot's the only one. <laughs> yeah, they, they can the only put it on the male G spot. Is the so only... you have to put. So you have to put a USB stick in your ass. When you finish you reading, you're a soft dick, bus. Yeah, that's how you knowledge. Knowledge just end. comes where flowing out. Premature ejaculate, completely soft. All right, I gotta go. The end. Yeah, It'll that's work. the end. I would listening. not use that item. I would not use that technology. I would not buy it. <laughs> okay, I would do. Okay. I would do it just. To, I mean, Ryan, I would. Even if I didn't have the technology, I'd still put cables up my butt so I could fit in. Yeah. That'd be cool. And just to, you know, feels good. Yeah, yeah. All you right. Hit the end button. All right. Peace. Godspeed. Get high.